ladies. My ladies. And everybody else here not sitting on a cushion. Well, we have a rather curious subject this morning. To study our heritage from the past is not simply a waste of time, because most of that heritage is still with us. I think it's, it's important to live life with a knowledge of its mystery and of your own mystery. And it gives life a, a new zest, a new balance, a new harmony to do this. The human story is much more complicated and much more mysterious than we've been taught. We need to wake up as a human species. We need to become our own leaders. This is, the, in my view, the next step forward. When people find out what it is that's ticking in them, they get straightened out. We can win the fight, but we can win a little every day. And every day when we make the smallest victory, there will be a little more of happiness and a little less of pain. Every day, one step forward, even a small decision, will strengthen us for another one tomorrow. And gradually, these right decisions will bring us enlightenment and companionship in the spiritual adventure of existence. <laughs> Jeff, are, are you reading anything right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm reading a, a, few, a few different books. Um, you do like me, like you got the, the ADDs going and you yeah, can't read one at a time? Yeah, it's like I get into a reading zone and it's like, okay, I can't just read one book. Yeah, you know, I gotta re I gotta pick up a whole bunch. You yeah, know, I yeah. bought I bought I went to um, the bookstore in Middletown and picked up a, a whole bunch of really cool books. One one of which I thought was really cool, which was um, the impact of telling your story and how positive or negative it, it could be, and, and how impactful it, it is. And actually, it's a book on how to orchestrate your story, and there's like timelines and really good tips and tricks to to really hone it in and figure out what it is that you've been through and that you have to say now is this telling your story to yourself no or just expressing no your story? it's about getting it online and you know coming into the world and telling your story gotcha yeah gotcha. so i felt that was a very palpable thing that i need to be investigating right now mm -hmm. um with the, the the cognitive things that that i have to do what we have to deal with you know uh, yeah. with the add it's like um you start something and it just fishtails into so many different things and you, you get off track and off focus. But I think if you can uh, discipline yourself enough to like figure exactly out your entire story and, and, and make and make it work and help share it so you can inspire people, I think it's something that I'm, I'm really trying to work towards, yeah. It's a great tool to, to write your own story. Mm. E even the exercise of like putting it down on paper just for some, you know, yeah. never, to, never yeah. to share with anybody, but just to tell, just let me go to my first memory all the mm. way to right now. I've had to do it as an exercise um, and uh, I, I thought it was a waste of time and it found mm. it to be quite useful. That's why I asked, the story you tell yourself or the story you tell other people about yourself and a lot of people don't yeah, have those in line. They tell themselves one thing, and then they, they yeah tell a story. Yeah, um, to other people. Right. Yeah. I, it, everything changed for me whenever I started writing in a journal. Mm. You know, I started journaling about uh, whatever it was that was going on, mm -hmm. whether it was the challenges and triumphs of the day, mm -hmm. or it was a memory that I just randomly plucked from my past that just out of obscurity. Yeah, oh, that just this. floated yeah. into my consciousness, and I was like, oh, you know what? There was this one time when this thing happened and my reaction was like this and looking back now it's kind of interesting that I reacted that way and I kind of wonder why and maybe this is it and all of a sudden you've got five pages written of yeah of, of psychoanalysis on yourself or, right right you know just understanding how your life experiences has, has, has shaped mm -hmm. who you are and how you react and mm -hmm. I think it's a powerful practice to have and it developing that skill it's like everything else everything is everything and so developing mm. your ability to tell your story which is you know, in a way, is the easiest and hardest thing you might do. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's certainly the story that you know best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you're not rewriting Lord of the Rings, right? I mean, it's <laughs> right. It's all coming from inside yeah. your own cognition, and yeah. Um, it, in other words, it's it's the best way to practice mm. telling a, any story is yep. to tell your story and being able to straighten out that story 
and tell it in a linear fashion. We were talking to my my 13 year old last night at dinner. Yep. Who is a wonderful storyteller. Very insightful. Oh yeah. Young man. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know he started to tell a story, and then all of a sudden it branched and it branched and it branched, and I just grabbed him. I said, Hey, buddy. All right. We love this, right? But mm-hmm. as a storyteller, try to develop your ability to to branch off a little bit and bring it back. Branch mm-hmm. off a little bit, mm-hmm. bring it back, and you know he he totally got that. Oh yeah. But it's developing oh, yeah. that craft is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then um reading a lot about uh herbal medicine um that's a good one. And, and like uh the, yeah it, it, it's good stuff this is, it, um you ever read anything by a guy named Steven uh Buner? Mhm. Steve uh Steven Buner. Yeah, Steve Buner. B U H N E R for anybody who's listening or watching. Uh he's a an herbalist, like an ethnobotanist mm. and he's big in the Native American plant medicine space. Okay. And um nice. does a lot of neat stuff. I think he's friends with Paul Stamets. Mm, and um, that would make sense yeah yeah he does a lot of he's he's the one that introduced me to the idea i've got a few of his books at home i'll show you but um he's the one that introduced me to the idea that you know we as a modern society uh especially pharmacologically have a tendency to want to extract the the bare essence from a thing from a plant Mm -hmm. you know whether it be dmt or it be you know some anti-cough you Mm. know um thing sure and then we just want to extract or thc we just want to extract that from the plant and then mm. we want to take it. And then we, it's, it's again, it's that left brain shortest line between two points thing, mm-hmm. right? We just give me the bare minimum to get from A to B, the, the thing that I think is what it's all about. And you don't get any of the other stuff with it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he was talking about how a plant has uh, a spirit just like people do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And in a way, every chemical in that plant is its own spirit. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. We are made up like um, Dennis McKenna said, we are drugs. Uh, you know, I, I look at chemicals, yep. spirits. It's all the same thing, right? To me, just different languages to describe the same, the same construct or the same thing. Mm-hmm. We're made up of, of biochemistry and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, those are spirits, right? I mm-hmm. mean, if you're in good spirits or bad spirits, that's different neurochemistry, different biochemistry, absolutely, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have a tendency to, uh, with our modern science to extract a thing and leave the spirit of that plant behind. But anybody who's ever like done, taken DMT versus ayahuasca, the brew and all of the spirits that go into that brew know that it's a wildly different experience. Mm. Uh, and the native American people and most indigenous people had a respect and an understanding for that, that extraction of the essence is not the way to really get the most out of a thing. And you could see how those were innovations, right? Like, mm. right. oh, we just need this one thing from this plant, but the rest of the plant, if you take it, it'll heal you here, but it'll make you sick here. Mm. So yeah. let's just take this one thing. Oh my God, it's such a great innovation. But is it? Is it at really? At this point, nature mm. is divine. It is symbiotic to human existence. But mm-hmm. I think we've, for the longest, and you guys know this, we forgot that. Yeah. Most people don't know that. I'm still trying to come up mm. with my relationship with it and my understanding with it. It's something that we don't do consciously. Mm. Just understand that, yeah, nature is imperfect, but perfect at the same time. You know, this is a natural flow state. So to take and add all of that science and to take something out and extract just this one little thing at that time was probably an amazing scientific feat, mm-hmm. but it also defeats the purpose. Well, that's, that's one of the things about, you know, mm. microscopes. You know, I think about like the advancement of science and, and we, uh, you know, modern science is really, they're really stoked about their, their instrumentation and their, their, their little doodads and widgets, their, you know, elect- widgets. electron scanning microscopes and all this mm. stuff. And like that stuff's neat, but in a way, maybe it, it, it is sort of over analyzing, which anytime you over analyze something, you give it more value. Sure. You know, if we're gonna analyze the shit out of a piece of art, we're showing that that has a lot of value in this room, in this group of people. Um, if you're going to overanalyze the structure of an atom, you know, mm. you got a whole bunch of scientists and an entire scientific field of study dedicated to uh, developing better microscopes to see the material structure of an atom. But, you know, who's really backing up out of, away from the microscope and looking at that um, instead of that one atom? Let's look at that element. And let's see mm. what that element represents. And I think that's the difference between really ad- the advanced ancient study of alchemy. Mm. Uh, and the modern study of materialist science mm. is if we can just get enough microscopes on this plant and we can extract all the different compounds, break it into the million different compounds and chemicals and molecules 
and then we can apply those in a thousand different experiments to you know some kind of a virus like a cold virus or something like that we can find out which of these cells in this plant kills that cold virus mm. and so let's just suck that particular compound out give it to people in some cold medicine and then that's that's it mm. but in reality if we had that that steers us down this path of hyper specialization and hyper attention to the atomic structure of things the material you mm. know shortest way between two points whereas you know if we had more of the indigenous or tribal sort of classical natural you know perspective on these things it's like hey let's take this whole plant and maybe by taking in this whole plant, whether it's in a tea or a poultice or, you know, a, a, a snuff or whatever, we take in this whole spirit of this plant and maybe it won't just fix that cough, but maybe it will, it'll treat the deeper underlying things that are associated with that cough. Maybe it'll mm. help cleanse our body or whatever. I'm just making shit up, but I mean. No, but that's, yeah. that's accurate. Yeah, you know it makes what I mean? sense. I think about that stuff sometimes. Yeah. Steven Buhner made me kind of think about that. Yeah, that makes sense. So all of that, um, just because I felt like interrupting you because you talked about reading about herbalism. <laughs> what i do <laughs> thank you add yeah no all right let's just go down uh go <laughs> well, down that's what's pathway. that's what's missing from these people that are in these specialty scientific fields right it's very left brain hmm. and it's very structured and they they have decided what is relevant to the conversation and what is not and a lot of that is that esoteric knowledge hmm. it, it's that right brain creative process right hmm. you're not going to meet too many people i guarantee you that their whole job is to break down the study of an atom or create instruments that are only going to help our understanding of this mm. that don't discard all of that information as yeah. to not be scientific facts so it doesn't exist in my tunnel of reality. Therefore, I do not consider it. What happened if all those people that were doing all that were balancing that left and right? You know, what if they were they were taking into consideration yeah. all this ancient knowledge and these past civilizations instead of discrediting it because it's old information and now I'm the creator of the new information? Mm. You, what would that look like? You think it's a ever landscape? Yeah. Do you ever think that like I, I think this sometimes that we're getting to a place where you know thanks to people that are doing really good work in like cross disciplinary studies, Joe Dispenza, you know Robert Grant, um, Greg Braden, a lot of these people are. Um, it's like the, the all the quantum physicists and all the CERN Large Hadron Collider people, all the like the cutting edge physicists are getting into some really spooky territory. Mm. They're they're finding some really crazy spooky shit going on. Yeah. Quant you know quantum computing with like D wave computing and stuff like that. They're they're openly talking about how they're tapping into other dimensions and stealing resources from these big macrocosmic entities mm. who may or may not have interests that are aligned with our own. I mean this is the spookiest, most sorcerous shit you can imagine, and it's what these guys are talking about factually, openly, that they're actually doing, mm. right? And then, I, I guess what I'm saying is I feel like we're getting back to a place where science, the mainstream science you know, community, scientific community, is, is, a, is starting to run smack into a wall, um, and that wall is the realization that somewhere in the distant past, a lot of these ancient science, sciences like astrology and, and alchemy particularly, um, and esoteric and occult philosophy, hermeticism, these things actually described a very a much more complete and thorough way of looking at the world and understanding the way that everything works. Mm. Things like the, the principles of correspondence and gender and all that from hermeticism, as above, so below, as within, so without. You know, that ancient alchemical mm. sort of way, of way of looking at things. I think that we're that maybe to me one of the most interesting things that I would predict is going to happen in our life is that science is going to have to accept that there was some really interesting advanced scientific ways of looking at things in the distant past and a lot of that stuff is reemerging mm -hmm. now. Mm. You know, Robert Grant cracking the the prime number code, you know, is that can only that can only stay hidden for so long or stay on the down low for so long. That's right. a mathematical monumental discovery to take the prime numbers that we always thought for thousands of years had no code they were totally random there was no pattern and then along comes this guy who's really just a businessman and, and a polymath and he cracks this prime number code and shows that it's it's not random there is a pattern and it was esoteric and occult numerology and, and math you know mathematics that cracked that code mm. and once that thing reaches once that that, that discovery reaches the main stage of science and and math it's going to crack everything open i think mm -hmm. you can't run from that kind of discovery and go shit maybe we, we have to kind of take some of this ancient egyptian or atlantean 
sort of philosophy and, and science seriously. Mm. That's a great point. One of the many things about our time that's really special. Mm. The woo-woo and science coming back together. Yeah. Spirit and science. Yep. Spirit science. Yep. I think the Egyptians were doing that shit. I think that they were they were scientists, mathematicians, philosophers, mm. spiritual people. Yep. How, much, like Harry how Potter. much does this kind of information and the esoteric and hermeticism and all of these things that I know you're well versed in, how do they affect the creative process that you have? Are they a big portion of it? Are you super analytical and over diagnosing or is it flowing? And it, is there? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't go. I don't know how to answer this question. Yeah, well, I, I know that like when I went, you know, the first time we, we hooked up over at your place, you pulled out a was it a was it a it wasn't a Mahabharata or a Ramayana. It was a, some Hindu art book. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Mm. I don't know. I guess in, in general, whenever, you know, everyone's got a different relationship with divinity, right? Everyone's got a different relationship mm. with the the cosmic or the divine or the existential or whatever. Mm. You know, we all kind of have a lens that we see it through. Whether you're Christian or Buddhist or you're Catholic or you're like me and you kind of just cobblestone shit together that you like. Mm. What have been some of the, like the, the religious influences in your life? Whether creative or otherwise, <clears throat> you you pray into uh, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> you, uh, how does that work for uh, you? I don't know. I'm like drawing a blank right now. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, for me, it's I'm kind of all over the place. You know, I think uh, maverick, as Joseph Campbell would say. I'm a maverick. Yeah, <laughs> I make it up as I go along. You know, there's uh, all this truth and all these different mythologies. I'm cherry pick from all of these great things and create something that is valuable and useful in your own life. Yeah, I know, just, I make it fit, because to me, like, hermeticism is the basis for it all for me. It, you know, just understanding hermeticism is really, hermeticism is like, like a framework, a scaffolding that you can build a religion on, you know? And it's really based on duality, the light wolf and the dark wolf, you know? It's, uh, everything is sort of, spirals and duality and once you understand that you know you can just look at jesus and satan as dual ends of the same kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah, could, can't you take the hermetic principles and, and just dive in any religious yeah piece of work and find the correlation yeah so it is the foundation yeah, yeah. for 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 that mentality that thinking and yeah because religions it, in general hermeticism is basically it's sort of like this walter russell way of looking at the the fabric the, the construct of reality in this dualistic sense, you know, and really it's like understanding alchemy, the, uh, you know, like earth, air, fire, water, that kind of thing you can find on this sort of four, four axis or, or two axis graph, you know, you can find ways to characterize all the elements that we know of, mm -hmm. all of the, the molecular structure that we understand, even the decisions we make in our daily lives, the characteristic of our friends and ourselves, psychology, you know, and it's really what hermeticism is, is just giving you a framework for understanding all that stuff. And you'll find that there are these correlations between the macro and the micro, between the psychology of our own mind and the nature that we immerse ourselves in, whether it's a tree or a rock or an animal or our kid. And then around that, you see that religions have all been built on that, mm -hmm. you know, and they all have their own beautiful stories and all that kind of stuff if you know how to look for it. It's always been overwhelming. And then I feel like the more you get knowledge of it, the more it becomes less daunting to stop thinking that I'm just the product of a, a perfect scenario where my parents met and the biology created me and now I'm here mm. and it's my turn to be here and exist. But the more you really dive into what consciousness is and you get into these ancient principles and you realize that there's way more to everything. Mm. You know, you say the fabric of reality, this is the air has a feel, you know, mm -hmm. e everything is important. Mm. Everything's working. And there are things we can't see that we know are there. And we've been able to channel and see different things at different times. It becomes overwhelming. And instead of just walking mm. around going, Man, they're just, just having a bad day. Right. You realize there's like a greater purpose and a bigger picture. And there's, there's everything is everything and it mm. is connected. And at first that concept just gets I, for me personally, just was like, oh, uh, no, 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 go. I want to go back. Blue pill. Blue, yeah, pill. blue pill. Yeah, blue, blue pill. Blue pill. Abort. Blue pill. Abort. It's a trap. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, I mean, like one of the things we talk about religion and stuff being built or wrapped around this framework of hermeticism. You know, hermeticism is just the study of the framework, right? Mm -hmm. Hermeticism isn't the framework. It's the study of it. It's an ancient science that goes back farther than we know. 
um, certainly to ancient Egypt and probably beyond. But um, Joseph Campbell's, you know, hero's journey, his his outlook of, of comparative mythology and comparative religious studies is is a great look at that. Like you don't have to dive into hermeticism and become a master of hermeticism to understand it. I think Joseph Campbell gives people a great uh, sort of on-ramp um, to understanding the framework of, of the hero's journey, which is the story in our DNA, which is the story of every day of our lives. We, we wake up in the morning. We have noon in the middle of the day. We have a twilight in the evening. Every night the sun dies, and we, we die and go to sleep, and then we're reborn the next day. This mm. is the story of Horus and, and Osiris and Isis. It's, it's, it's all there, you know. Mm. And uh, it, it's it's this fractal unfolding of uh, of the the hero's journey is really what makes up our mm. life. So anybody who has um, really who, who wants to know about Joseph Campbell, and I recommend it highly, just go on to Netflix. There's a Joseph Campbell thing right now. Have you seen the Joseph Campbell thing on that Netflix? Mm -mm. Dude, it's so dope. Um, yeah, I can check it out. It's something that uh, we've got a clip from it in our uh, intro, our new intro song here on the podcast, but. Uh, Joseph Campbell was a comparative mythologist and I think he was a psychologist someone who really understood the way that all these different mythologies roll together mm. so go check out that thing on Netflix um, yeah he does it by the way just because I know you're a big Star Wars fan I was about to, so that's what mm. I was leading at yeah. was mm -hmm. whether you're into Hermeticism or Light Wolf Dark Wolf or the Tao or Star Wars yeah Joseph Campbell Sith and the Jedi Sith Same and thing. the Jedi yeah without Joseph Campbell's work we wouldn't have those really great stories and tellings, which, you know, impact people uh, mm. in, in a lot of people. It's probably one of the most successful, long-lasting, cherished. 90% subconscious, mm -hmm. too. And there's the entire industry and the people who, who pay to see this and are a part of it don't even realize what's happening. They're like, oh, it's a cool story. Right. And it's, it's got cool effects. He really cracked the code. And it's, it's like, it's they're being blasted with the sub their subconscious already I, I ex knows exactly what's happening mm -hmm. and they see themselves as any of these characters if not all of them what do you think about people who just like i don't get it what what is that what does that mean what does that say i, I think it's just they're they you know what just too it's, closed off too well yeah it's just, it's just the right like, brain picks up on symbolism yeah the left brain is literal the right mm -hmm. brain symbolic. So if you have an underdeveloped right brain, oh, this is a great thing to get into. Mm. The right brain is symbolic. So if, if you if you watch a, a, a deeply symbolic and a very well-made symbolic movie or story like Star Wars and you just don't get it, mm. I think you've got to have an underdeveloped right brain. I'm not okay. saying that you have to be able to analyze and pick it apart, but if it just makes no sense to you. Well, right. it's a thing too, because you know, we're roughly the same age mm -hmm. and, and I, I identified with it immediately when I saw it. I mm -hmm. think the first, I remember seeing Return of the Jedi in the theater, and that was 1983, so I was five, and I immediately identified with Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it still is incredible. It still comes up for me often. You know, and there's times, and I'm sure you, you, can, you can relate, where you feel the pull of, of the dark side, and of you're course. like, I'm gonna become Anakin if I don't, if I don't bring on bring the presence online, right? You know, and I and, and and there's a there's a power there, that's in that brutal like I'm gonna hack these people apart, type mindset. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful story, and it just it's never ending, and it's awesome. Just infinite symbolism in that. Infinite symbolism, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, every time you you pick up on something new, and I'm not talking on the production, something something in yourself, yeah. something you're you're you're. Yep akin to in your life for what's going on mm. and you can watch that you know first time i saw it as a teenager mm. you know now i'm in my 30s and i watch it and i have the same emotional response to it i love it it's just mm. it's always enjoying but the the underlying metaphors for what they're talking about you can watch it a thousand times and it'll hit you in a thousand different ways depending totally. on where you're at in your yeah. journey. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not identifying with Luke Skywalker. In fact, most times I'm not. Sometimes mm. I'm identifying with uh, um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm. Sometimes I'm I'm in a different, and you know, Star Wars is a lot of archetypes. There's a lot of, a lot of that going and on. And there's the Yoda too, the, the Buddha. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's incredible. I just but, now realized how closely Yoda sounds like Buddha. Yoda, Buddha, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yoda, Buddha. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's like if you, 
if you look at you know just about any religion i just would use the bible because it's the one i'm most readily familiar with you mm. know from my upbringing but um sometimes you relate with job mm-hmm. sometimes you relate with peter you know it's like any mm. mythology any any well-made mythology mm. is going to contain different archetypes and different characters that you can relate with yeah and then a good storyteller will tell you what will 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 we'll, we'll, will write or tell about how that character got into a situation that is realistic for that character type to get into Mm -hmm. and then what they had to go through because of those decisions or because of those circumstances that led to it and then how they got out of it how they dealt with it Mm -hmm. and a well-made story will be will resonate with you and it will you'll be able to relate with that character that hero or whatever all Mm -hmm. along the way Mm -hmm. and that's why it's so important because they tell these these truths that you know you can't just sum it up in a sentence usually, yeah. um, but you're like, oh, I get that. You know, I feel like Job, and I've gone through this and I've gone through that, but I remain faithful and I lose everything, but I'll stay. I'll keep the faith. And mm. you look at it literally, and you can really contort that story and make it seem pretty awful. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you know how to look at uh, on the in, in the right light, you know, it can mm. be it can be inspiring and and um, comforting. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Star Wars, and you guys are a lot more familiar with Star Wars than I am, but from what I've seen and talked about with y'all, it's kind of the same thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, and you know what, it, 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 you know, when they are have been working on the newer films, so there's they're pulling in an entire new generation into the storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, what seems palpable for me is, is um, an accentuated version of the story that's happening now. Okay. With the Empire being the <laughs> militarized um you know military complex Mm -hmm. and it's over excited over well somewhat over exaggerated but there's that power structure Mm -hmm. and then there's that evil who's wielding the power structure Mm -hmm. and then there's the people the rebels or the awakened ones who are like i'm i'm not down with this 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 sucks and you know and then there's the jedi who are the enlightened beings who are protecting you know the situation mm-hmm. and it's just like that's that's what's happening now yeah you know they're not all these different creatures and spaceships and da, 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 but it, it's it's a it's the same story oh it is so we're living that storyline we talk about this all the time that we live in a very special time because we're in a time of an awakening mm. you know and and people can feel it yeah and there's no more of these like there there are some special people who are really in tune with what's happening and what's going on in the evolution of us as a species of the universe as a whole but all of the great ones in history don't exist anymore. Mm. It's the Jedi. There's no more. Yeah. You know, there might be one out there. There's this. Uh, there's that Luke Skywalker. There's a person fighting the good fight right. and trying to grow that up. But there is a global consciousness awakening that's happening here, mm-hmm. not in Star Wars. Here, <laughs> right? And you can right. see it. You can see the shift in perception, and you can see this generation or the generations past, like. Um, the boomer generation that's kind of right now prominently in control of governments and different mm-hmm. things and they're running major companies and these shadow yep. works that have the newer generation is awakening they're going i really don't this doesn't seem right right you know there's something there's the more. whole morality you know cocoon is opening up you know and uh yeah the sanity cocoon the sanity cocoon <laughs> it's like right. w- waking up it was like john lennon in that one interview or whatever he's like this world's run by fucking insane people yeah it's insane you know and like one of the things i see is it's difficult for a lot of the boomers you know like you say that are like running the corporations that are the big vote go out and vote guys all this stuff Mm. like they're they're so oblivious to the to the real depth of psychopathy that people Mm. are capable of Mm -hmm. that's what i find it talked to my grandparents you know talk to some older boomer type people and it's like they have no idea like they're fucking psychopaths that rise to the top of these corporations Mm -hmm. and you know being in the corporate world myself and dealing with a lot of these people i can tell you they're fucking psychopaths and Mm -hmm. the people who get to the top of these of these look you got to be a little bit of a to to whatever degree you're a psychopath that is this that is a there's a correlative degree that you are going to rise in a big corporation because Mm -hmm. it's hard for me to fire someone right it's hard for me to fire someone um I wouldn't do well in a big company where I have to fire 20 people a, a week, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But you know who would do well there? Somebody who wasn't so sensitive and didn't care about people so much. So then that person, right? There's Grand Moff Tarkin mm-hmm. coming, coming at you. 
Okay, I'll tell the story. You guys keep bringing in the. <laughs> we'll bring the references. You bring All the right, references. Fair enough. So you get people that, that rise up, and so this this next person that gets my job instead of me, he gets promoted to middle management because he doesn't mind firing a few people. You know, may not be a psychopath, but he's not a very nice guy. Mm. So you can just imagine and paint a picture for yourself what kind of a father he might be, what kind of a husband he might be, mm-hmm. or whatever, what kind of a dog owner he might be, what kind of a neighbor. Y- you know what it is? Mm. It's the business over people or numbers numbers over, over people numbers over people yeah yeah and um that's once, and that's left over right brain by the yeah. way yeah and and as soon as that is the 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 over overarching narrative that's when there's problems like that yeah that 100 percent, that and that's that's exactly again this is that do that dualistic left and right you know mm-hmm. um uh, co- co- uh competition or conflict yeah it's a zero-sum I, conflict you know and it's like is is inspiring and is beautiful our you know the right the right brain folks let's do away with that so we can have a left brain society that we can run and operate like a corporation like a factory like a global well we've all seen the, the the videos where somebody finds a clip and it's a clip of congress or, or celebrities at the oscars and they go this person's like really a reptilian species that's here and, mm. and i'll show the clips and whether there's any truth to a reptilian species that's running everything behind the scenes i like to think more and more that these are the people in power operating in that reptilian mindset, mindset yeah, yeah. right to almost harness and channel to where for a second a lens flare makes them look almost like a like a lizard person or you see this crazy i really thing like that viewpoint i i, yeah, I just feel like good. that's where they're at it's yeah. a lower vibrational reptilian it's cold-blooded and these are cold-blooded that's people yeah. you know yeah. And that's the people that are, on, you know, it sucks, but th- these are senators. These yeah. are the House of Congress. These are, it, these are it, famous it's, people. It's you an know, interesting are, thing. And, and, you know, I've had many visions of, of what's happening, you know, often when I'm projected um, inward, I'll get an, an outward scale uh, globally, you know, the complex mm-hmm. and, and what it is and what's, what's happening. And it's, it's so, it's om- the way I can be okay with it is that it's happening purposely so people will awaken Mm -hmm. to rise up and and it's like the great the great story of the known universe is is the struggle and the hardship and the triumph that that we're living Mm -hmm. that we have been living since the dawn of consciousness so it's like it's so dark and so doom gloom and it's like this overarching like you don't stand a chance, mm-hmm. but you know we absolutely do. And um, well, I yeah. think just like it's it's hard for some good people to understand the depths of evil that mm-hmm. bad people are capable of. I think that it, it's impossible for the the deeply evil people to to comprehend the the depths of love that good people are capable of, and mm-hmm. what and what that can accomplish. Mm-hmm. Because with love, you have unity, you mm-hmm. have understanding and compassion, mm-hmm. and um, I think you can kind of see how uh, the more the media kind of heats up and things get crazy and division starts flowing out of every TV set in America. Anytime that happens, you can kind of look around and go, hmm, getting a little bit chummy around here, I see. Mm. Yeah. It's like uh, on Parks and Recreation, Ron Swanson like fucking comes out and yells at everybody in the office. He goes, who broke my typewriter? And everybody's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And everybody's panicking. And then they turn on each mm. other. And they're like, I think JC did it. I think Jeff did yeah, it. Yeah, and they're yeah. doing this and that. And then it like cuts over to Ron Swanson. And he's in, in front of the camera in a different room while they're all fighting behind him. He goes, I, I broke my own typewriter. Um, but, you know, things were getting a little bit too chummy around here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, yep. I feel like that's, you know, anytime. I don't have TV service at my house. But, like, anytime I'm out at a restaurant or a bar or something and I see a TV on and I watch it and it's just streaming garbage and it's like okay Pete must be must be getting a little bit too chummy around here and yeah. it stays that way nowadays well it's like that that uh, you know perfect um picture of Frank Zappa you know and he's on the second floor and sitting, he said don't eat the yellow snow well no he's sitting on the toilet and there's a conduit running from the bottom of the toilet connected to the TV to the back of the TV mm, yeah and it's just like yeah, oh it's, wow it's yeah brilliant. I've never seen it yeah it's awesome yeah, it's um, it's just poison. Uh, if you watch TV regularly, you watch the news. Anybody listening, I employ you to just give it a shot. Go seventy-two hours without even turning on the TV and just see what that does for you. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, the, you'd be amazed. Like, I'll I'll talk. Like, I love my dad so much. Right, He's a great guy. But like, 
I'll go talk to my dad and something political will come up. And he's not like aggressively political. Mm. He would certainly say he's apolitical and he's above all the bullshit, but he's mm. not. He watches the news and like, I'll go over there and he's like, he'll bring up some obscure fucking, to me, some obscure conflict that exists mm. in, in, in the world today. And I'm like, you realize like that's not a thing. Mm -hmm. That's a thing for you because you saw it on the news this morning. Right. No one else is thinking about that who's not watching the news. No one I know really watches, no one I spend my time with well, watches the news and we're not living in that virtual reality that's being created. And, and you know, why is the news existing? Are they doing it because they love us? Obviously. Are they impart Obviously. imparting information out of love? Mm -hmm. You never know. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think so. This morning, I'm at a, a, a veterans gathering uh, for my daughter's school. And so there was about a dozen other vets there other than me. Everybody nice. We're having this great time. And we go into uh, this little choir performance. And I'm sitting in the row with my wife. And this man turns around. And he goes, thank you for serving. What branch? You know, Air Force. Six years. Um, he goes, yeah, Army. 32 years. Retired. And I was like, oh, my God. It's amazing. Start wow. talking to this guy first six seven minutes of this conversation he is a very nice guy mm -hmm. he's there his grandson goes oh, to shit. school he he <laughs> rolled up and the principal took the grandson out and he had his uh navy cap on and she goes so you have to come back at eight o'clock we're doing a veterans breakfast mm -hmm. please come back so he his kid's not in the performance or anything he just came back and he's got his grandson there and he's super nice i, I watched him interact all morning at the breakfast and now we're sitting there and within six or seven minutes it turns and he looks at me dead in the eye and he goes it's like this lieutenant colonel I just don't understand. He can't go and do that in front of Congress. It's under the uniform. And he starts talking. And I realized at this point, I'm like, this is some CNN story that I don't. He yeah. thinks that you follow it. I have yeah. no idea what he's talking about. Right. And I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then he get, starts getting really impassionate about it. And he starts talking about it, you know, to the point where his energy totally mm -hmm. shifted from oh, this yeah. really nice older guy that I was, I was interacting with. And it was lovely. But then he went into this, this storyline that, wasn't his mm. it wasn't his life experience yeah. nobody he was it. he was living in that virtual reality yeah. oh yeah and, and as soon as he stepped into that piece of his of his reality that he is invited in and accepted mm. as part of his worldview once he started exploring that part of that hallway in his in his reality his whole energy field changes mm -hmm. and that's an, an important thing to realize that the news does that shit oh yeah oh, yeah you know, the media they they they, they vomit this stuff out and yep. um, when you invite that into your mind, into your home, it becomes part of your reality. We've talked about this before. Like, we don't we don't know what's going on outside this room right now. What we know is what's happening in here right now. Right. So we could just imagine that our neighbors next to us in, in the next in the next you know building, they want to kill us. They just want to they want to kill us and wipe us off the face of the earth. And we could sit here and have this conversation with that in mind and. That's going to affect our anxiety. It's going to affect our heart sure. rate. It's going to affect our stress. It's going to affect the way, yeah, the way that we're looking around the room. Mm -hmm. And whenever we walk out, you know, it affects that. But that's a story we're telling in our own heads, mm. you know. But if we tell ourselves that we love them, they, you know, they're probably going to bring us some cookies later. You know, right. it's it's right. a whole different world. And that's why the when we operate from a place of fear and 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 closed heart uh, versus a place of love and open heart, mm. this left versus right gratitude versus fear love versus you know hate whatever however you want to look at it light wolf dark wolf who you feeding right you know and the, the media definitely has mastered this duality oh yeah thing. well <laughs> absolutely and and you know as soon as you watch tv what's what's one of the first things that that your mind wants food mm. it's just true and you're watching the tv i need a snack and you this the hand to mouth mm. starts and you're watching, and all of a sudden, you're blasted with a Doritos commercial. You're blasted with Coca-Cola, blasted with alcohol, and all pharmaceuticals. these things. Pharmaceuticals. So, you know, it, it's like you're being blatantly brainwashed. And it's like, <laughs> and it, I got to hand it to the folks that are making this food. Not that I eat it, but I have in my, my youth. It tastes awesome. Oh, it does yeah. things to your brain that is that nature really can't support, right? Can't do, can't same, produce. Same as video games. Same with video games. Nature so, can't so it's like the certain consistencies and salt, salt sugar ratio, mm -hmm. and oh, it's, it's scientific dopamine responsive. Oh yeah, yeah. like they, they know exactly chip. how to do it. You know, so so you know, 
to to get out of that it took a few years you know and I, I would i'll never go back but um it affects you it puts you in the perfect seat for more of that bullshit mm-hmm. yeah. and um superficial gratification superfi- yeah absolutely oh, and, and was, it lowers you enough to be like okay you're 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 destroying your insides although it's it's the perfect weapon because you can't see it yeah. happening mm-hmm. right you know and yeah, it's, it's not like you're silent. sitting there cutting yourself right. visually where everyone sees all these. Imagine, it's such a good point. It's yeah. like the invisible injury. Uh, right. Oh, and they've like, convinced everybody to slowly poison themselves and volunteer for it and pay them to do it. I mean, it's, it's well, a perfect and, crowd. And then, oh, and then, brilliant. And then pay brilliant. them to fix the problem through pharmaceuticals. Exactly. I mean, think about that. Like, here's, here's the yep. news. Here's a bunch of news that's going to give you anxiety. And in between snippets, I'm going to give, sell you anxiety medication. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're yep. like, God, I feel so fucking anxious. I got to go get some Xanax. Mm-hmm. And then there's a commercial for Xanax. You're like, oh, perfect. Yeah. Here's the phone number. Let's yep. just put that in. And it's mm-hmm. like, it's it's the perfect it's the perfect crime. Oh, oh yeah. No, absolutely. And and it's like the the box. It's like it it's it, it's 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 classic operative conditioning. Mm-hmm. You know, you 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 feed, in you know the the, the organism with the input. You know, and you get the desired, out, you know, effect. And they spare no expense. I mean, food companies, why do you think McDonald's logo is red and yellow? Oh, yeah. Because psychologically, Psychological it colors. makes you hungry. Those yeah. colors affect you in that way. Mm-hmm. You know, they, 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 they have spared zero expense. In fact, their people's whole sole purpose is to find some remote town that doesn't have anything and go, in 15 years, we're going to have a McDonald's right there. They know. Years and years and years before, yeah. they know this highway is coming this way, and this is the perfect spot to have the most traffic to the Mac. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just one example of how much time and effort and results, and what they think they're doing is growing their brand or product, whether they're consciously aware. All of that research and development that's going into this is oh, absolutely. Is, is just horrible m- trickery. I mean, it's oh, deception. I, it's fine. You know, and I, I educate my children about this daily, and it took a little while for them to be like, "Oh, dad, just go, you just stop it." But now they see what we see. Yeah. And, um, That's good. You know. Well, just being conscious of it changes yeah, changes their yeah. ability and, to armor up. You know, it's and it's a crazy thing, you know, with the symbolism and the colors. You know, I've, I've worked with folks who have deep cognitive problems. Mm-hmm. They don't really know what's going on. But you know what? They know what a McDonald's is. Right. That's, they that's know interesting. They know exactly that's- what it looks like and where it is. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. It's yeah. deep because you, you they all know you've worked in mental health. I've worked with so many folks, and no matter how ranges, far gone they are, they know they know what it is. You know, they make double, is. they light up. That's yeah, really interesting. You them. say the word, and it's like, you know. So it takes uh, you know a greater a greater strength to to not want to go down that road. I mean, the 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 experience of eating is so powerful yeah and it it's a a wonderful amazing experience but also pathway to great addictions real problem problematic addictions and issues with health in particular and then there's the whole psychological component where you know you don't you shouldn't but you can't help yourself right you know and that's that's you know when i we have these conversations about this stuff i think about that quote from jesus or he said something about be not of this world, but be, but be, uh, but come to transform the world or something like that. Mm. You know, I, I'm butchering it, but it's like be, you know, be not of the world or value not the things of the world, but but live in the world and come to transform it or mm. transmute or whatever, however it was said. You know, but I just think about the 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 unnatural state of things, right? So food has been engineered through the flavors and all this to create these artificial dopamine responses that mm. nature cannot compete with. Right. And video games, we talked about the effect of video oh, games yeah, on yeah. our kids, you know, it's yeah. like the flashing lights. All dude, all these video games nowadays, like at the beginning of the video game it'll say, um, warning. Warning the, the warning lights middle. lights yeah. may induce seizures and this and that. I'm like, well what even if they don't induce seizures, what the fuck are they doing? Yeah. If mm-hmm. they if they could potentially be doing that there is so, at least some risk on that spectrum. There, there's like, there's like a Jeff Sullivan painting is never ever going to induce a seizure. A Da Vinci painting is never going to induce a seizure, mm. right? So that's like a zero threat. Now we have video games that are high enough on the threat level that major companies have to include a potential like a threat warning. It's unnatural, I and mean, then you wonder why kids don't want to go outside and 
and and and breathe and well, sit on a tree like stump. Well, it's like it 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 shatters it shatters this realm to the point where it's no longer interesting. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Well, they have the light now. It's bland. You, you lay down on your back and they put the light right over your forehead and you close your eyes or you put on the blinders and it strobes and blinks and and it, it uh it's supposed to create a very psychedelic-esque experience almost like dmt without dmt and mm. it's literally just beaming light to your closed eyes right over the, the front mm. of your face and you can lay under this thing and have these transformative and what's the video game doing exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. What is that releasing in your brain? What mm. subconsciously is it dancing and playing with? Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't know why something took on as a, as a phenomenon or why it went viral on the Internet or whatever. But there are all these little subconscious things, you know, into the deep seat of consciousness that are connected. And it hits and taps on that, manipulates it or takes advantage of it. At times, yeah. Is what I'd, I feel like. I tell you, the the. <laughs> the the parasitic entity that's that's pulling the strings and is orchestrating this 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 chaotic control is brilliant very very brilliant in its pursuit of domination well it's it's mm -hmm. it's schooled um yeah. in ancient you know wisdom and understanding of how it, this works it, there's it, a science it, to there's a science to it and like i'm glad you said ancient because you know i feel and i don't think i'm alone here that this this essence has been here forever and it's something that's always been here, always will be here. And the earth is, it's just, just lurking here. Yeah. Just lurking. And as soon as there was a consciousness that it could feed on, it began Yeah, you use the term yeah. parasitic, and I, I love that. Right, uh, yeah. But that's so, what it feels like. The manipulation of our consciousness is mm -hmm. what its, and it's purpose and drive working to. And working and working. So we're talking about, just for the listeners, to anyone who may have missed it, we're talking about the, this parasitic entity that is sort of, operating that we believe you know it's operating the control systems of this world the mm. the, uh, the 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 parasitic money systems the banking cartels the military industrial complex the 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 political the broken and corrupt political machinery the uh, the broken and corrupt religious institutions that have all kinds of horrors that they're responsible for mm. um it's our belief i think maybe in a very wonder woman kind of way have you seen the new wonder woman movie no fuck me man we need to watch it so anyway, she's great. Um, she's the Wonder Woman movie, Gal Gadot. There's uh, Ares, the god of war, mm. exists in this movie as sort of um, spoiler alert for anyone. <laughs> um, exists as sort of an immortal entity, mm. and Wonder Woman, you know, the whole the whole movie, it, she seems kind of naive and childlike because she's like, Ares is here. I got to go kill Ares, and everybody's like, No, it's World War Two. We're not, there's no Ares here. We're not in fucking Greece, right? It's the Germans. It's just the Germans, right? But then by the end of it, turns out Ares was this corporate military guy in a suit. And he's like, I've been here forever. I'm always going to be here. I exist inside of every person. And it's this profoundly symbolic it, thing. And and they like to hide the truth in plain sight. Oh. Yeah. So it's like, we and talk it's about like, it. we are, talk they gonna, about are they going to see this? I don't even care if they do because they can't stop me. Right. You know, and um, I also believe, though, that a lot of people in these like Hollywood spots, I don't I'm not on I'm not, I'm not in the boat where I think everybody in Hollywood's evil. Oh, I don't either. I think a lot of the artists and a lot of the, the, the directors and stuff, they they build these movies and they're like, Fuck, look, guys, yeah. this is let me let me put this in a way that your 13 year old kid can see. Mm. Watch Wonder Woman with my son. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's mm. like, fuck, this is how it is. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a cool way to present it. But yes. This parasitic sort of entity, this dark entity, um, you can think of it in Egyptian terms. They called it Set. It's yeah, Satan in the Bible. It's it's absolutely uh, Saturn. Satan, Set, Saturn, Cronus. It's all. It's this dark entity. The the Gnostics of Jesus' time called it the mm -hmm. Demiurge, um, the God of this world. Um, I think that that you know, uh, sometime many thousands of years ago, this thing took control of this plane of existence. Mm -hmm. and uh, has been doing shifty things and building its power through religions and through... Yeah, absolutely. And, there, and there's been the, the enlightened ones that have known about it but can't fully describe it. And it's just, it you know, speaking in parables and, and being like... This, How else you, do you do it? You this, sound like this, a fucking madman. Yeah, it's like... Right. Guys, there's a great big mm. demon that's taking right. over everything and it's with like a sandwich board on the corner. In form, either. Yeah. So it it's it's right. It's it's, it's a very essential. difficult thing to try to describe to try and. Um, you gotta watch to, Wonder Woman. 
Yeah, they sounds, did a great sounds, job. Sounds of great. What you're talking about? They took yeah the essence. The, this yeah, I, I I didn't know that that even yeah. Mm-hmm. Go I know on. I've heard you know I've I've seen her in, in Justice League and I didn't yeah. I didn't know that that they're it's my favorite. It's my probably my favorite superhero movie in terms of oh, sounds great applying it to relevance in modern times. Yeah, wow. Taking this God of War, this this entity that she sees as a as a uh, you know maybe a humanoid god walking around doing bad things right and she seems really naive and childlike the whole movie but there's this war going on and all this death and destruction and by the end of it you see that yes he is embodied in this corporate guy with a suit but even he is like you can kill me but Ares the spirit of war the spirit mm. of chaos and destruction and fear and division is always going to exist inside the heart of every person sure and so I think that battle is, you know, that light and dark wolf battle that takes place in the heart of every person. I think that's why, to kind of bring this full circle, I think that's why your art and the music of, you know, your music and other people's music that's uplifting and inspiring and teaches people to feed that light wolf. I think mm. it's so key because that battle is won and lost in the heart of every every person. Oh, yeah, in every, in every moment. Yeah, every moment. You know, every every moment there's an opportunity for you to to delve into you know in- incredible beauty and and light and upliftment and or i mean you get taken over, you get taken over you know by despair and and chaos and you know that's that's a whole pathological system you yep. know i mean we've all we're all going to be confronted with that and yeah. and um i feel you know it's always going to try to get in yeah through that door yeah but with you know the awareness and the higher consciousness presence it's just it's it's it has less of a chance every time the, the presence you know? we we talked about presence yesterday and you know presence is so key mindfulness because you really can be be an observer mm. of it all and you can see i one of the words i i like that the bible uses for um for satan is the accuser mm. right and satan right is the fractal of the of Aries or whatever Wonder Woman would have called it, that, yep. that fractal exists at the microcosm within ourselves, mm-hmm. and it's um, it's the accuser, mm. right? How many times have you judged yourself and said, I'm not enough? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, constantly. It's a, oh, ba- yeah. it's, a ba- oh, yeah. it's a moment-to-moment battle there where yeah. we're talking about where, where the accuser creeps in, and, you know, sometimes uh, I'll talk to someone, and they'll say, well, I'm like, hey, how are you doing on that thing? You know, are you pursuing, how are you doing on that new painting? Are you pursuing that new painting? And, uh, you know, I, I was, but I'm, you know, I'm just not sure it's really working out the way. I, that's the accuser. Mm. That's the accuser. And, and we, I used to have preachers that would say that stuff. And now I look back on all those sermons with a much different, uh, from a much different angle. But um, that accuser exists inside of us. And mm. the accuser is the one who finds the back door in. And that back door is, is, is in through your insecurities, your subconscious fears, mm. your self doubt. And it, it just creeps in that back door, you mm. know? And you can see them on psychedelic trips, particularly because <laughs> they like to sneak in. And oh yeah, yeah. At the worst times and make things. Yeah, and, and they're looking for some kind of confirmation. They're looking for you to be. Like, <gasps> yeah. And then they have you. Yeah. You know, I see them every time. Yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. They always, they always creep in. You know, and they take all these different forms. But it's yeah. like if you give them. To me, that's that's the the beauty of you know of of doing the work is because when you really try to embody the uh, the archetypes and the, the type of human being that you want to be, you encounter the accuser, whether it's in this plane or some other. Mm. And, uh, you know, I got to a point after a, lo- a lot of work, you know, several years of work, mm. where the accuser and its little minions crept into my consciousness, and mm. I just went, hey, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm doing everything, man. I'm, I'm working with my kids. I'm working on my own self, you know. Yeah. I'm doing everything in my life I can right now. You, 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 you we don't do that here. Mm-hmm. Fuck out of here, you know. Yep. And but being a conscious, being aware, present. Well, the, with 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 the presence, you you finally can differentiate between those those things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't know it's not you. Right. That's it. You don't know. You think it's you. And that's why people bite. Oh yeah. They bite they bite it. They're like, "Okay, that this is me." This is my emotion. What is uh, the, those incubus lyrics that I always quote? <laughs> From Drive, he says, 
He says, uh, sometimes I feel the fear of uncertainty stinging clear, and I can't help but, but ask myself how much I let the fear take the wheel and steer. That's mm. it. It's driven me before, and it seems to be the way that everyone else gets around. Mm -hmm. But lately when I uh, find that w when I drive myself, my life is found, right? Because it is that presence. It's We drive around in a state of fear. He's got some great lyrics. Oh, mm -hmm. he's a genius, you uh. know? But we do. Look, we talked about the media and stuff a minute ago, and I don't, certainly we're done with that, but like... What are they doing? Is they're keeping us in a reactive state? Mm. When you're reactive, you're 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 operating from a lower frequency, that reptilian survival fight or flight frequency. Yep. You're not capable of higher thought, mm -hmm. and you're just reacting to stimuli. Well, what what are they mastering as a you know this big insidious machine? They're mastering stimuli. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. all right. Let's keep them in a in a highly stimulated you know reactive stance, and let's throw as much of the it's it's like if you you know um you just picture a, a, a movie where there's bombs going off and somebody's running across the battlefield and they're like okay we'll just throw bombs at them until they run exactly over to the other side where we want them to be and they're up on this higher tower lobbing grenades and they're just running these people on this field over to a mm. you know and that's if you if you step onto that field and you take part in that battle um, that's essentially what you're doing. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, you got to have the presence to step out of that. Well, I've run into um, d on the journey inward, and and me and you have talked about this personally, probably not on the podcast, but I've found in the past few times where I've taken a, a significant um, amount of a substance to go fully inward and go on that journey, mm. I found myself coming to the same place and, mm. and interacting with the same emotions mm. and having these same thought patterns, and basically, it's like you know, being waterboarded for however long you find yourself. And I've caught myself there right at the beginning of a, of a psilocybin trip and spent six hours in that place. Get caught in that accuser just, loop. Just beating me over the head with these things that I'm aware about myself. Mm. And it's going, you know, you do this and this is bad and you should feel bad for it. And so the initial response, the first time that happens is to, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to mm. eliminate this. But why am I eliminating this? This is part of who I am. Mm. Why am I eliminating this? Because this made me feel bad and it made me feel shameful. And so now I'm taking something out of who I am fundamentally, whether or not you agree with it or not. Yeah. It's part of who I am. But I now feel shame because it's not a part of everybody else. Right? Right. And so I went back, took another trip, but I'd done all this work to eliminate these things. Mm. And it was still there. And it goes, yeah, you stopped doing it, but it's still part of you. Mm. And I go, oh, my God, I can't win for losing. And I haven't gone back, but I had had the epiphany recently and through conversations, talking with Adam, and having somebody in that brethren that you can you can open up about sure. this. He goes, OK, doesn't matter whether I do it or I don't. This thing just wants to make me feel the shame. Mm. It just makes me want to feel negative. Its own purpose isn't to help me. Yeah. Mm. It's just to make me feel this emotion. It is. It operates. It feeds. It's parasitic on this emotion. So mm. presence, understanding. Mm. That this isn't shameful. This is who I am. This is what I do. This is how I act. And I've countered both sides of that coin, and I have made peace with that, and this is who I am. I feel like if I go back in with that intention and that mindset, yeah. it can't harm or, or bring me to that place the way that it has before. It wants yeah. to keep you in, in fear. Yeah. You know, and, and this is interesting. You brought this up because I've, I've been thinking about this quite a bit because I was talking to my kids about it, and um, it's like the story of, of it. Mm -hmm. You know, here's this force, if you will, that's embodied in this creature, this clown that has a intuitive ability to read your thoughts, turn into your greatest fear yeah, and eat you mm -hmm. because you taste better when you're afraid. Mm -hmm. Damn. That's exactly that's that's, that's 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 beautiful. That's that's what I feel like I've encountered. You know, and that's the, and, the, the, and the how the how is battle. it defeated? By facing your like, by, by I, facing your fear and and l aligning with people who are going through the same shit and joining forces in raising that energy and destroying it and mm -hmm. be like you you can't you you're not getting in here mm -hmm. you're nothing you and know, nothing, essentially nothing pisses it off worse though than than you starting that and then it wants to come and that's what I had. I had the second wave I wasn't expecting because I had. It's going to try a little harder. Yeah. Like yeah next they, time. Oh, and yeah, so yeah. It, it, yeah. It came at me faster. It didn't give yeah. me a chance to think I was okay. Just immediately. Nope. 
You don't get yeah. any euphoria here. We're going straight into this. Yep. And that it's even more time in the seat in that mindset, mm. right? And then, you know, that that really messed me up. Oh, I'm sure. It's been a year. Let me let me throw this out. And you and I haven't really talked about this much and I don't know why. I never thought to bring this up about that problem. But like, you know, having a um and I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but for me this this helped a lot of that uh, when I dealt with it. Um, earlier on especially is having a religious framework to approach the experience with mm. right so having a day to day I would say over the last couple of years I've gotten better and better and better at having a day to day relationship with my deities you know and now I'm getting these you know these tattoos where I've got Buddha all up my forearm it's like this is in my face it's yeah oh there. yeah you it's you unavoidable know, it's right there it, and you know, and and just having those, um, having those deities. I've got Thoth up here. I'm getting Poseidon down here, and Ganesha mm. there, and and Jesus is another one of mine, and Michael mm. the Archangel, and Horus, um, getting the Eye of Horus on my bicep, and it's like, this is my armor, you mm. know, this is my armor. And so when I've gone into these situations and I get stuck in an accuser loop and I can't escape that mm. that that shadow that's just coming out and just going, you're a bad father. You're a bad boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You're a bad son. You're a bad brother. Yep. You know, and it's like you do the work, you do the work, you do the work, but you can't really get out of it. This is where I think one of the things that the Bible kind of has right, and a lot of religious books have kind of right, is you know, if you do have deep, connected faith to a higher deity, mm. and that deity, you know, we can openly uh, openly understand that that deity resides within us. Oh, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. It doesn't mean, but it doesn't mean that that deity doesn't exist. Right. It does exist. It exists within us. Right. Right. Um, even Jesus and in, in, in the Bible and all this stuff talks about how God resides within us. And if we can, can really, uh, to me, what the, the Christ figure or these different deities represent are archetypes that we can connect with and reach out to and embody and mm. all of this. But more than just knowing that they're within us and knowing we could strive to be the Buddha or Christ really iconifying them and praying to them, mm -hmm. developing a relationship to them, talking to them, you know, when you when you when you think of them, you know, you give them reverence mm -hmm. and that gives them power. Because anything that you think about, that you pray to, that you meditate to, gives that thing power. Mm. And so I've been in some really fucked up dark places in deeply meditative states and um Really, everything in the world, in the universe, was closing in, ready to eat my soul, mm. you know. And I call out to Christ and Jesus, you know, <laughs> the, the, your standard traditional American Jesus <laughs> shows up in, in, in a bright, shining light. And uh, the chorus of a million golden angels mm. flowed through every cell in my body and the demons were blasted away. Yeah. And another time, it was a giant serpent goddess, yeah. a la Jeff Sullivan's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, snake painting. So whatever it is, I think that those using deities using religious practice to help whether you're in a meditative state or or under ayahuasca or you're, you're just you know at work having a tough time I, I i to me the application of religion to your spiritual life is uh is a helpful and enriching thing absolutely and and, and prayer period prayer period yeah. Meditation prayer, prayer is just you know it it works and it is um it's an important uh, process and it's something that can be wielded yeah, in in such a way to to help other people, uh, help situations, you know, help yourself, and um, it's just absolutely vital. I yeah. feel you know I I've really stepped into uh, prayer um, in in recent years, and it's just um, just part of it's part of an everyday, you know, occurrence. You know, yeah. just even if it's, you know, you're 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 praying over your food. Yeah, you know, and um, sim simple little things it makes a difference it creates it creates an awareness it creates an, an opening yeah and 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 you 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 anything you can believe is real yeah sure 100 percent. you know well we know that our minds create our reality you know and certainly on a on a psychedelic trip it's you know your intention is your steering wheel mm. things can go south real quick i i like sometimes not having an intention mm -hmm. yeah for fun yeah. Just because like I j just 
you know, it's great having attention, but sometimes I'll intentionally not intention, you know, int- I get intentionalize, it. you know, what's going to happen. Just be. Just, just no thoughts. No, no, like, oh, I hope this is easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go you know, easy on me, please. <laughs> please be nice. You know, and sometimes fun. it's just like, just silence and, and, and whatever happens, happens. And, and, yeah. and that's, that's fine too. I've had times on, on mushrooms of, of all size doses where like I'm sitting there waiting for something to happen. I'm waiting for something beautiful. I'm trying to navigate to something beautiful or something insightful, mm. trying to go find knowledge. And I'm an hour and a half, two hours in and nothing's happening. Mm. And then I realize, you know, I love the, how we've, we've been talking for the last couple of days about how uh, psychedelic trips are a microcosm for life. You'll, oh yeah! You'll learn big existential lessons in little, uh, mon- seemingly mundane lessons on the trip. So I'm sitting there for two hours. I'm like, all right, where's the wisdom? Where's the knowledge? Show me the cosmos. Give me the, give me the whatever. Even right. good, bad. Just show me something. Where are we going? Two hours in, I'm like, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden, this little voice kind of comes in and goes, "Hey, dude, um, you're doing that thing. You're mm-hmm. doing that thing where you're looking over this moment's shoulder into the next moment, and you're waiting, anticipating, pushing for, pulling." You're mm-hmm. trying to make this thing happen. Stop. Mm. Be present. Just just get into the flow yep. and, and float on top of the river in the current and just yep. see where it takes you. And dude, within two seconds, after two hours of nothingness, mm. within two seconds, I'm full blast. Right. Yep. And it's 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 I literally stop. <sighs> yeah. And yeah. then you breathe and then and all of a sudden it's like all of a sudden the current just catches you mm-hmm. and takes you off. And it, it's that is a microcosm for how I am in my life. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm moving. I'm doing. I'm going. I'm wow. How, how come this isn't working? How come I'm stressed? How come everything's da da da? Yeah. It's like, stop. Er, presence. Er, and all of a sudden, life's beautiful. Oh, and yeah. And it's just it's like, holy shit. It was it, this beauty was around me the whole time. And that's why it's a constant practice. You know what I mean? I, and I think. Yeah. It's got to be. I don't know about you guys, but when I first was, was, was like really in working, you know, in, in this, this way of being, it was like. Eventually, I'll get to the point where I yeah. don't have to practice anymore, right. and I'll just be enlightened. Right. And that's it. Around. And then after a while, I'm like, it's not the way it is. It's a moment. It, every second of every day, be mindful. The journey is the goal. The journey is the goal. We you are know? what and we it's repeatedly like, do. And that realization is it's it's ongoing, and it's it, that's still beautiful, you know. But I think there's a lot of misconceptions about you know you think you you just you get there and then all of a sudden boop and you're perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, the, you know, you know there's, there's an interesting thing there. So like this Aristotle quote, I think it is, he says, like, we are what we repeatedly do. Mm. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit, mm. you know, right and, on. Yep. And and that is that is the truth, man. And one of the biggest problems I had with Christianity at a very young age was the I- idea of what they call perpetual salvation. And there are different denominational um, like disparities between these belief systems, mm-hmm. right? You got like 2,300 different denominations of Protestant Christianity. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, but one of the most contentious beliefs within Christianity is that um, that once you accept Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, whatever that means, you are saved. And that is it. And you cannot be unsaved. You're going to heaven. You can go murder 10 million people. Yeah, don't forget saved. the sin, because what Jesus died for if you're not out there sinning? Right, you know? right. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's always, it's, it's crazy to me now when I look back with this sort of, with these new eyes, and I think about what kind of, it's, for me it's always, yeah, go for it. For me it's always like, uh, what is, I totally lost my train of thought. What, what, um, what, what, what are the fruits? What is the output? Mm-hmm. Of, of of your belief system, right? So if you believe, there you go. Yeah, turn it sideways. We're, we're cranking up the Instagram live in here, guys. So bear with us. What is the what is the output? What are the fruits of your belief systems? Mm-hmm. And if you believe, like I believe, uh, like everyone at this table believes, as far as I know, that you have to continually dedicate your life to the practice of excellence, the practice of goodwill, the practice of compassion, the practice of understanding the rejection of the accuser, right? All these things. Um, if you uh, if you believe the things that we believe, it's a daily practice. Absolutely. You know, you have to do it that way. You know, w- whenever you believe that once you're saved, you're always saved, and whatever happens, whatever you do after that doesn't fucking matter. Like, what kind of a, of, of a, what kind of fruits is that belief system going to sprout? Right. Mm. You know what I mean? It's going to sprout some awesome fruit. 
<laughs> yeah, dude. It's going to sprout some amazing fruit. Yeah. You know? Well, it's complacency. Yeah. Here. It's, yeah, good. fuck it. I can be a dick. You know, I can be judgmental. Who cares? Mm. I'm saved. Well, we, Jesus got my back. You guys are both talking about how it's about continuously reminding yourself and in, 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 in constantly being present. It's a never-ending work. Mm. And you're never going to achieve that great thing. And so what they've done is kind of package this. No, just do this one thing and you're there. But we know the reality is there's constant work. And something we've been talking about is the inception of those ideas. But like deeply planted to where because we're constantly forgetting, you know, we've all we forget had, the lessons that we learned. The we, really key, crucial oh, shit yeah. that changes our life for a month. We've had profoundities <laughs> in our lives where we go, oh, my God, as above, so below makes so much sense in it blast open your brain and you're walking mm. around in this space and everything is making a whole lot more sense mm -hmm. you get into a groove you get comfortable and that lesson starts to fade away yeah right and then you go six months and everything's kind of getting off and you were in this great spot and why did you work out and then you have that profundity again it's the same lesson right mm -hmm. but you have to relearn it at yeah. that time and it's what is what is the trick and i would love to figure this out and it's something that i've put a lot of my my quiet moments and mental effort into is mm. is, is implanting that so deep into your psyche that it's not something because that's what it is. You're constantly dropping, you're learning these lessons and then mm. slowly becoming complacent to them and then not implementing them regularly. Right. And then you have to re-realize and you go, man, I already had this figured out. I can't believe I let myself slip. And I just had this, this span of, of what I thought was woes and trials and tribulations mm. when I knew the answer as to what that problem was. And that's just, that's part of that journey as a goal. And it's continuous work because mm. Until somebody cracks that code where we can have these profound realizations and then keep those forever, that is that is enlightenment, I guess. In, oh, in a yeah. Nutshell. You know, but it just... I, well, there, I think, you know, just hearing you talk about this is the uh, talking about, you know, the how do we implement these realizations on an ongoing basis, you know, because it's like sometimes you'll make this realization and like for me, it's like something like poetry. And I'll, I'll, I'll realize, like, I'll see a poem or something, and I'll go write a poem. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, oh, man, I forgot that writing poetry helped unlock my creative centers. It helped open up my heart chakra. Mm -hmm. It helped get all these things going. And then, like, it'll change my life for two, three, four, five, six weeks. And I'm writing poetry, and mm. everything's really gelling. And then something will happen in my life, or I'll get busy. And then that just kind of is the first thing to go for whatever reason, because I've, I've, I've put it into some place from a time management standpoint in my life where sure. it's the first thing to go. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's gone. And then a year later, I rediscover it. And I'm like, oh, fuck, poetry. I keep forgetting, you know, the last five mm. years, I'll write poetry for a, a month and a half or two months at a time. Life's great during that time. Mm -hmm. So, like, how do we hold on to these realizations? Or even something like JC said, like, as above, so below, a principle um, that you can walk around with. Well, you, you mentioned it earlier. You know, you look down at your arms and you're, you're, you're once again, um, connecting with with that symbol or mm -hmm. those symbols that reinstate what you already know, what you believe. That's um, it. I think that's why we have sculptures everywhere in our house, and why we have paintings, and why we hang crystals from our rearview mirror, and why there's bells outside. All these things, I feel, uh, they contribute to us bringing us back mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. same space that you you've spoken of they already. trigger yeah. a reminder yeah 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 that's exactly it like i i got a on my phone i've talked about this before but like i've got this one push-up policy you <laughs> know and uh it's just the idea that you know just every day go do one push-up mm. one push-up because how hard is it anyone can do a, a push-up it, it, it's like the motif of of the mason every day you lay a brick yeah that's it you're not worried about laying multiple bricks you know if you don't have enough energy to lay one lay one solid brick or one solid push-up mm -hmm. so this is i'm showing jeff for the listeners my home screen here oh it's yeah big flaming number one and yep. it says one day one page one song one step one breath one dance one push-up yep and it's just every day because you're not going to just do one push-up anyway no of course you you're know, going to do but, five or whatever but it brings it back to the quality of the one it's always the mm -hmm. one. The, the quality of every uh, mindful gesture, every mindful application yeah. of energy. Um, That's it. And, and not uh, for me, I know, like particularly with exercise and with conscious breathing, with meditation, um, 
for me with exercise, it was like, all right, I'm going to do 15 reps. And I'm just like getting through, y just yeah. get to the 15. Just to count to 15. Just to count yeah. to 15. We're, we're back to that numbers, you yeah. know, that mentality. Oh, it's yeah. All, it's all in numbers. It's all yeah. in numbers. You're, you're focused on quantity, not quality. Yeah. Right. Shift that perspective. That's to it. That right. Quality of what you're doing versus I have to set this achievable number goal. It, absolutely. And is that daunting or is it yep. doable? Right. You know, so it's. And, and, and then the mind's like, yeah, but. I mean, I don't want to do that. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm really good at that. Uh, uh, we all are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so how do we? How do we? How do we get? Um, how how do we uh, implement? How do we? Uh, what's the word we keep using? Uh, ince inception. Well, yeah. How do how do we? How do we develop uh, an inception of of practices in our life? And I think uh, of these realizations, mm -hmm. of these powerful mm -hmm. realizations. And it is that create an atmosphere, an atmosphere mm -hmm. of reminders and reflection, it, it, atmosphere that's conducive with with keeping you where you need to be to be yeah. pro proactive, productive, creative, uh, and in, in a state of inspired that, bliss. That's that beautiful, and possible. I'm having the realization. You know, the movie Inception, when they're mm. getting lost in the dreamland, they all have a totem. Right. Yeah, yeah. The that's totem. how they. The that's totem. how they ground themselves. Absolutely. That's how they figure out if they're awake or asleep. They have that thing. So, yeah. Yeah. totems. Ha surround yourself with them. Keep them with you. It's you know? not an accident that statues and and talisman and and all of these things. So you walk into a garden, and you get the sculptures, and it's just uh, as you're passing through the garden, you pass like the Buddha or the. Um, w um, the food, gnomes. the food dogs, and things like that. That you know that represent certain guardians and certain states of mind, like mm -hmm. a Buddhist state of mind. And those little tricks bring you bring you back more often than not. Yeah. So there's not an accident that there's an entire um, shelf system full of inspiring things. And as soon as you walk into this room, it's like a magnet. You're right. Over here, it's like you know. And there's an, you could get lost in in that inspiration for for a long time and i think that specifically and we've talked about this this backdrop that we have mm -hmm. when people come in here even when we we, we operate here every day you mm -hmm. know but when you come in here this is a space of creativity this is a oh, space yeah. of creative energy and flow mm -hmm. and we know that it is contributed to that oh yeah but i think a lot of times i don't think about the cab of my vehicle Right. driving in traffic did i create that space in there or is it just a generic manufactured machine and i'm now in the you, machine of traffic right. and, and maybe that's where i'm getting bent up i don't i don't have anything hanging off of my uh, rear view mirror for me to look you, up and go oh, yeah you know what i have in my rear view mirror hmm. fuzzy dice fuzzy <laughs> pink <laughs> dice. Fuzzy dice i've seen it i have a bell a bell a bell um it's not active all the time but you take certain turns ding it, it rattles mm -hmm. and it's like bring, brings me back back. So the more aggressive I drive, <laughs> right? The more the, the bell rings. That's so like it's like, it's, That's awesome. it's like an alarm. It's like, what are you doing? Slow the fuck down. Come on. You know? Mm -hmm. So, um, that's a, a, a trick, a neat little, little trick. I love you know? it. I and, love um, it. So, so simple, but it makes so much sense. So mm. create an atmosphere and like, man, look, ritual, mm. ritual, ritual. Mm -hmm. right? I, um, without going into, into any detail about my views in the Catholic Church. If you go into a Catholic church, uh, one of the nice Gothic ones like in Manhattan or something, mm -hmm. and they're all over the place, but like some of the ones in Manhattan I've been to, um, you just look at, uh, or we were watching the Tolkien movie. Let's use we, that. Oh, Better example. Incredible. Oh, yeah. Incredible. We watched the Tolkien movie last night sure without did. you. Sure we were did. thinking about you, though, the whole time. I got I gotta still haven't seen it. Yeah. You should have been there, man. But they, no, one, one of the things, <laughs> yeah, you guys have yeah, a great movie. Uh, one of the things that we noticed about that movie, like, was they, the boys were in school, and it's kind of like Hogwarts, you know, it's just this beautiful gothic school. Totally like mm -hmm. Hogwarts. Yeah. And um, there's stained glass, and there's archways, and there's sacred geometry embedded into mm -hmm. the masonry and everything else, and it's curved lines, and it's oh, just it's just beautiful. It's ridiculous, yeah. And surrounding yourself, putting yourself into an atmosphere like that, you know, is um, is a powerful, powerful thing. And then to go back to like the Catholic churches, add on top of that, walking through with the incense and the little, the censers and the, mm -hmm. and then the prayers and the chanting and all this. Yep. I mean, the ritual is a powerful, powerful thing. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it's magic. And what it does to the consciousness, smells, sights, archways, stained glass, the mm -hmm. light impressions, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, 
and and so to implement the, the things that we're talking about to implement consistently in your life these realizations these profound realizations that, that make a positive impact on you mm -hmm. it's ritual it's oh yeah ritual it it's atmosphere yep. it's practice we are what we repeatedly do excellence therefore is not an act but a habit mm -hmm. it's the realization of these things and making space for them in your life on a consistent basis to be practiced and implemented i think is what you, is what the answer to oh, that yeah. is absolutely you know you, you're con constructing the the temple yeah of which to operate from so whatever home base is whether it's your your studio or your whatever mm -hmm. i can't help but set that thing up so at every turn i'm blasted with something that inspires me yeah mm -hmm. And, and nature does it constantly yeah. when you're out there. And what I found amazing about nature is like, you know, we're, we're living a, a society where everywhere you go, there's something to be purchased, something that wants your, uh, to grab your attention in order for you to, to buy it in some level, you, you know, yeah, for, the yeah. most, for the most part. But when you go into nature, you don't feel that. No, you don't. You don't have to go into nature and come back with something yeah nature doesn't want anything from you it doesn't want anything from you just just, care of just it. be here just just come 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 and, and be here you know so it's it's something that is actually great mm -hmm. you know because it's like you know we have so many so much there's so much stuff mm -hmm. you know in the world and and you know if we can create that space and 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 whether it be on our bodies you know to remind us to bring it back yeah i mean i think that's 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 what helps keep oh, it keep us there you absolutely know, for sure. talking about this and talking with ritual i'm sure you have yours before you get started in a creative flow space for painting you know me, no, sure. my, my biggest outlet uh creatively and the thing that that i've gravitated to is, is cooking food you know I, I get in my kitchen that's my magic space it's yep. calming it mm. it's my it's my favorite thing in the world but i do without even consciously realizing and i have a ritual you know my kitchen has to be clean oh yeah you know, i have to I, step one of ritual is the space has to be conducive to the creative flow. So yep. dishes in the sink, counter space cleared. I need to have room to move and operate. Mm. And those I just go into like a machine before I even start, you know, the process of creating sure, and cooking, sure. you know. So mm. without even thinking about it, that is why that's so successful in my life is because I do have these rituals. Yeah. Now I'll be conscious of these yeah. things when I'm doing Oh, them. yeah, yeah. But yeah. but that is the space where I know I know how to get into that that flow state in that operation and I'm it, through just the past few minutes of talking with ritual I go that's why I'm successful in that area yeah. because I have implemented rituals and, and requirements and things that I do instantaneously yeah and without doing those things I, I've tried I don't I don't achieve that level you don't achieve you, the quality is not quite there and, right. and sometimes because of time constraints you don't have an, an hour to clean the entire space mm -hmm. you know I know I know I I don't you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. I'll be, you know, it'll, I love it when it is clean and it's, it's perfect. And then it's like, okay, whew, I can be, you know, there's more room for the energy to right. get trans, yes. trans, uh, translated, you know? So, um, but after a few hours, it's a, it's fucking chaos. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and I love it that I love that too. You know, there's a million B bottles of paint open and paintbrushes and water and q-tips and paper towels and it's drives everyone in my house crazy you know and they're looking and they're like oh my goodness but that's 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 fine too that's part of the process it's part of the process the you can't be like chaos. all right have about. an idea let me perfectly put this thing back over here and then you gotta just you're in it and and you know you, you gotta go for it mm -hmm. you know i and, love it yeah it's important but you know Having a clean space and an open space is, is, is important too. It's the balance. You right. gotta balance the two, you know. And well, I know I'm gonna fill it with chaos. So yeah. let's not <laughs> yeah. bring what's let's already make there. Let's get rid let's of make that space white for the noise. chaos. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. What does that mean in our lives then? Let's make space for the chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Well chaos we just we talked about it earlier. You dance with chaos. That yeah. uh, that is that is part of the journey. So to create space for chaos is to have uh, a relationship with chaos. Okay. Absolutely. So now we're now we're talking about building a relationship with the uncontrollable, the chaoticness of yeah. life. You know, and that's that's a a high degree of acceptance, and realizing that it's not something you'll ever be able to handle, mm -hmm. control, yeah, or manipulate. So it's just an and it's a force that has been here 
forever and will will be here forever. Yeah. And we're part of that. And as unsettling as it is, because it inhabits people, it inhabits situations, and it is what it is. And it's it's uncomfortable, especially for for people like us, you know, yeah. for sensitive folks, you know. And it's but it's like, I embrace you for what you are, and I, I appreciate you for being mm-hmm. so chaotically beautiful. Well, and to me, you when know. I think about like make space for chaos too, I think about um, you know JC clearing the counters and cleaning everything down, moving stuff out of the way. You getting your space clear in the studio at home and getting everything out of the way um, in life makes space for chaos. What 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 occurs to me is that um, chaos, like you said, chaos is going to happen, mm. right? Chaos is going to find us. Mm-hmm. You know, one way inevitably, inevitably, inevitably it, yeah, it, it, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So make space for it. And how do we make space for it? By not by not crowding and cluttering our life space with bullshit that is going to get in the way when it comes time to dealing with that chaos, mm-hmm. because we know it's going to come it's just a matter of when. Right. So if if I've got my life so p- packed full of stress and imbalance and uncertainty in all these areas that I can control. Mm hmm. I have not making room for the for the inevitable chaos Absolutely. to come. Absolutely, and there, I think that may be a huge lesson in this there's conversation. The, there's oh, yeah. the invisible. This is the invisible clutter, and then there's the physical clutter. Absolutely, yes. So, th- those are two big things. Well, we're you know? talking about something that I say a lot. That is a tool that I use in almost every facet of my life. Step one to anything is recognition. Mm. That's where it starts. And so, by having this conversation, we're recognizing in the realization that chaos is going to be there. It mm-hmm. exists. Boom. I now recognize that this is just an, a thing that happens. It, it will yep. always be there. And so through the recognition of it, now we're talking about creating a space for it. Mm. We're talking about how to deal with it in a healthy, proper way. But right. it all starts with the recognition of the fact that no matter how much you change your life or operate or what you do, you can't. You, you really don't have control, you know, because... Mm chaos will find its way in water into a rock and split it open. Oh, absolutely. You know, so yep. recognizing chaos is there, making space for chaos. Now when the chaos arrives, you go, okay, this is a thing. I have created an environment it, for it to exist absolutely, in. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's the your reaction to it. Yes. Which gives it more life energy. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> The less that you're able to react to that situation or that entity or that experience, the more power you you hold, really, ultimately. Mm -hmm. You know, and people operate in a state of, let's see what kind of reaction I'm going to get from this person. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to create a scenario that's going to upset them. You know, and I'm not saying that it's like, it, you, know, you know, this is, it could be a subconscious monologue right. from, from the chaos that inhabits the mind but of... people do operate that way. That's where they're at. Mm-hmm. And it's like, think about, you know, um, drama and, uh, you know, gossip, things like that. That's all wielded to, you know, make... To create turbulence. To, to create turbulence in someone's yeah. life or many And a lot of that lives, stuff, you know? you're right, is, is subconscious on behalf of the wielder. It's like, you know, people who, um, I saw a quote the other day or uh, something that was said, it was like, you know, people who grew up in a state of trauma and all that, um, will subconsciously or, or, um, unintentionally bring that to a relationship. Well, that's what they have to offer. It's what what they know. It's what they know. It's, it's their operating system. And so if, if you, if you, you know, um, and that's not just like a romantic relationship or a friendship. That can be a work relationship. That can be a stranger passing on the sidewalk and you have to walk through a door at the same time. And, right. you know, so again, making space for that um, was something that we, w- w- a phrase that we, we kind of coined was seek out suffering lest it find you first. Indeed. Because it's going to happen, yep. you know, and that's kind of what got me into jujitsu was that, that realization, you know, talking to my buddy David is a, my, my jujitsu coach and, it was like, it's fucking painful, and it's uncomfortable, mm-hmm. and it sucks, and you know. But it's like, if I don't, if I seek it out, if I seek out that suffering, then whenever it finds me on, finds me walking in the woods on my own, you know, through the Shire, and a dark rider rolls up, yeah, you know, I can face that thing, yeah. whether it be not just a person, obviously, in a physical confrontation, but just challenge, because you know, doing a dealing with suffering at at the at the at the, per, at the personal level mm. um and being able to and hardening yourself against that at the the, the the close physical level 
does impact how you deal with suffering at the psychological, at the emotional, at the spiritual level. Absolutely. You and, know, and seek it out. Let's that's it find acceptance. Difference. And w with what you're working on with, with, with the jiu-jitsu, I mean, you're, you're helping establish the, the warrior archetype as well, yeah. which, is, which is what is absolutely vital in these situations. Yeah. Um, you know, a wise man once told me the story um, about the samurai, um, and the samurai was the most badass swordsman in the world, you know, ever. Mm -hmm. um, and his teacher took away his sword and sent him to the garden to work, to flower, to harness a love that wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And once he mastered that, gave him his sword back, kill with love. Hmm. So, yeah, it was, yeah, this really interesting stuff. Or sure. heel hooks. Or heel hooks. Buddy David says, kill him with heel hooks. Yeah. If you kill him with love, if that doesn't work, kill him with heel hooks. And yeah. We're talking about step two of like, the breakdown is we've recognized something, now we've accepted it. Mm. You know, you recognize it, make space for it, accept it, bring it in on your own terms as much as you can. As much as possible. Now yeah. you're, now you're building that relationship with suffering, with chaos, with, with anything. You can use that with anything. And you're responding. You're not reacting. Right. Exactly. And like you said, it's how we react. Well, if I've recognized it and I accept it, then it's not going to make me react like oh, this. Oh, yeah, I'm you're not, not gonna physically going to tense up and be like, well, yeah. mm -hmm. I knew this was going to The me happen. thinks that this is totally not cool. Right. And it's okay. You can think it's totally not cool, but if you react in a way that will put you in a compromising situation or put the other person in a compromising situation, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Mm -hmm. You know, there's enough pain and trauma in the world as it is, and the reaction of most people creates further problems. It doesn't Absolutely. make it better. You yeah. Know. Getting lost in the woods. You realize you're lost. What do you start? Do you start to freak out? Yeah. You know, you start to panic. What is yeah. that going to do? Is that going to help? Take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have to get lost to get found. Mm. You can react in two different ways. And I only know this because me and Adam got lost in the woods one time <laughs> in a pickup truck. Of course, but I'm giving directions and I gave us bad directions. Yeah. We went and down Texas the wrong is turn. a really big state. It's to get really lost big, in. man. And really uh, big. It's like 13 hours from anywhere to anywhere else. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm in the back having a panic. I, 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 we got our kids. We got our wife. We got oh everybody's boy. there. And I'm like, I, I got us lost. Now we're like really turned around. And Adam's laughing. He's like, sometimes sometimes we get lost. Let's just turn around and come back the way we is came. Is that why that, that sign is in your bathroom? Get lost and find yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I figured. It's, yeah. A, great, it's a great sign, and it's got the bus on it. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's, yeah, a yeah. Good, it's a good... Yeah. I'm glad you like that. Yeah, yeah. Get, get lost and find yourself. Get lost and find yourself. It's beautiful because it's so true in so many ways. You yeah. can get lost in your work. You can get lost in life. You can get lost in the woods. What, yeah. What are we talking about the other day? I, I, I told you, you know, go out and have an experience. Yeah. Just go out and have an experience, yeah. you know, because we get so comfy kind of hanging out and where we're comfortable. Sure. And what was it uh, David said the other day? Uh, your comfort zone will kill you. Yes. Oh. You know? And it may not kill you physically, but it'll kill you creatively. Oh, yeah. You know, it will kill you from a developmental standpoint, a growth standpoint. Oh, yeah, that's what we, we, we when we're talking about earlier with the whole David David Bowie quote, too, mm -hmm. you know, with, with what he was saying about that, about the advancement of the art is, is done from the position of your feet aren't exactly touching the bottom of yeah. the ocean floor, but you're kind of levitating in that space and you have an entire ocean. Yeah, you're on the edge of, of uncertainty. You're on, yeah, on the edge of uncertainty, mm -hmm. and that's that's the, the, the womb of... of of create of creation of creation for Absolutely. sure yeah what and a what a beautiful what a beautiful little bit there yeah you yeah. know and you're not comfortable there but you're safe but you're just far enough out where you can be free floating but you're not lost there's the an abyss. expansion taking yeah. place yeah you know and so this ties back into everything else we're saying is that like we have to find a way whether it's turn off the news create an atmosphere of of uh, you know and, and, and ritual around you know fostering creativity get out of that reactive state of mind mm. get yourself into a higher a higher um, a place where you're capable of higher thought mm -hmm. because you know what you don't venture out onto the edges of uncertainty whenever you already feel at risk Absolutely. whenever you already feel uncertain and off balance that's not the time when you're inclined to go run out to the edges of uncertainty and seek the great beyond mm -hmm. so in order to to be willing to undertake that adventure the hero's journey and answer the call to that 
we have to first move our sta- ourselves from a state of reactivity and lower thinking, that reptile brain, that root chakra functionality, mm-hmm. and move ourselves into the crown chakra, the Christ, the Buddha, the, the higher thought. And, and that's where we reach that, that, uh, that place of exploration. Mm-hmm. You know? That's by laying that one brick. One brick at a time. And when it, whenever you're able to do so with the highest degree of quality that you can muster. For That's sure. it. And okay. if you just focus on that one brick, it's a lot easier to focus on the quality that, of the brick that you're laying. Mm-hmm. That one, yes. Do one push-up. Yes. Yep. Do yes. one perfect, perfect, yep. perfect push-up. But the, but the ego's like, well, I need to lay as many of these bricks as possible. I don't yeah. care if they're, they're look, they look okay. Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to hit 30 push-ups. Doesn't matter. Yep. Just get the push-ups in. Or yeah. the opposite. What's one brick going to do? It doesn't matter. Might as well be no brick exactly. at all. Yeah, yeah, Might yeah. as well not even do a yeah, brick. Yeah, 100%. This is yeah. just one brick. It yep. doesn't really matter. It doesn't, it's, it's not going to make a difference. So right. that's the accuser. Yeah. yeah. Says you, The accuser says you don't make a difference. Yeah. The accuser says I shouldn't reach out to that person and bother them. Mm. That's what the accuser says. Indeed. You know what I mean? Yep. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the higher consciousness says you have something to offer. You are overflowing. Your cup is overflowing. Your energy is abundant. You have everything to offer everyone. Go get it. Yeah. Go do it. You yep. know, pursue that higher calling. Yeah. Seize the day. Seize the day. Yeah. Carpe the diem. I um. I'm blank. Don't be blank. Don't yeah. be blank. And blank's actually not a bad place to be. Actually, right. I well, like blank. Yeah. I like emptiness. It's hard to achieve. That, uh, we can get into this real quick. How hard is it is to, to achieve, achieve <laughs> quietness in your mind? You know, mm. that's a lot of people's frustrations with meditation is finding that place. When was the last time you felt truly bored? You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you I, just I, didn't have something to do, something actually, on your plate. You were just I bored. get bored when I'm in linear situations. Like? Like having to fill out a form. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's when I'm that. in a state of psychological crisis when I'm filling forms out right. at like the doctor's office 100%. or a school they hand you a clipboard or you sit in a chair and creating an account for something that's when I'm like oh you, why can't I draw myself out of this situation <laughs> you know what I mean like they don't leave enough room for you to doodle or anything and it's like oh, you know when there's no those, I mean it could be like really but that's I don't do calling forms. the insurance mm-hmm. company, doing stuff like that. I cave in easily. I think that's pretty relatable to almost anybody and everybody because I don't recall anybody ever who's like, man, you know what? I love filing a claim on my insurance. <laughs> I love dialing <laughs> I that one eight hundred number. I get a nice tea and I sit mm. down and I do this mundane thing that I know is going to be frustrating. And yeah, it's um, those are those are terrible moments. That yeah, they, they enact that. I yeah. have that same thing where this is just, uh, but. Yeah, the essential parts of life. Yeah, the but things the, that don't but really turn us on. The blank blank space is a good good space. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good it's good. Yesterday we were talking about being uh, present to the point of absence. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if this is the time for that. I wonder if that's what's happening here. I don't know. I mean, we are we are bringing it in. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You know, I mean, we're we're in a state of manifestation for sure right now let's um let's talk about this optimistic thing we have coming up tomorrow by the way have you checked in for your thought for your flight no i thought you're doing that I, <laughs> I, I, he's I, like i fucking I, hate yeah, i'm, le- I'm leaning things. on this guy to take care of everything now because yeah. i just i i'm sorry i love you so no, much it's okay uh, he's gonna get well, a one and you're gonna yeah, yeah that's that's it i've already got my a list in so you can just i'll save you a spot so it's not a big deal oh no. great it's not a big you know deal. Uh, are you are you pregnant? Because if you're pregnant, you can get on the plane before anybody. Yeah. No, I'm not pregnant. Oh, okay. Um, just checking. I'm just really anxious to look over and see Arizona mm-hmm. from above. Yeah, it's going to be great, man. Um, and for us to be headed to California in such an amazing time for such an amazing, incredible, expansive event is gonna, yeah, it's just going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So, um, just to throw a little soundbite out here. So tomorrow. Jeff and I are headed out to LA to Venice Beach to attend the optimistic uh, late night consciousness talk show. Mm-hmm. And uh, this thing is hosted by uh, Brandon Beecham, um, who is like the founder and the, the driver behind this whole thing. And he's the host of the Positive Head podcast. And uh, Jeff's been invited out there to display his art. So he's already sent three pieces out there. Sure. Yep. yep. And plus, plus one. Plus one. Yeah, so he sent three pieces out there, 
And we have another piece he just shipped out there that he just started specifically for the live painting slot that he's doing on the show. And um, it was created just for the show, just actually, for the show, because um, the, as the details would have it, Adam <laughs> 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 was like, Jeff had no did you did clue. you know your painting? And I was like, oh, nice. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> have you done live painting? Oh, yeah. I yeah. do it all the time. I love it. OK, cool. It's, it's great. Cool. It's great. So you're prepared a little bit, like well, not prepared, but like I mentally, did, I you know had nothing what you're getting into. in mind to paint. So I was like, well, I'll have to find an old piece that's not done. But then I'm like, anything old is not where I'm at now, and I need something current, and I need something that's in alignment with what we're doing today, what we're doing this weekend, and what is in alignment with the event itself, and what could be transferred Beautiful. to the people that are are there that they can take with them. Gotcha. You know, so yeah. a, a, a noble. Well, this, yeah, a hundred percent because this whole thing came about in such a beautiful, cool way. It's been so much oh, fun. Yeah. You know? Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, positive head podcast host of, uh, hosted by Brandon Beecham is like one of the big positive sort of conscious woo woo podcasts out there. Right. He's mm. got like Greg Braden and, um, Matt Kahn is going to be there at the show this, this weekend, which is awesome. Incredible author. Yeah, great author. Um, bestseller. Motivational speaker. And, comedian yeah very funny in his execution of his spiritual knowledge yeah he's oh, nice. he's, tre he's tremendous it's a fantastic delivery method comedy yeah very very fun dude jester um, jester mm -hmm. we uh so I, i've been listening to positive head um because uh, uh it was introduced to me god a couple years ago by my girlfriend three four years ago maybe anyway um when we first started this journey she like was Googling positive podcasts, right? In her podcast app, mm. not Googling podcast searching. And she just looked up positive podcast and positive head podcast came up first. She listened to it. Brandon Beecham is a phenomenal host. And so, mm. uh, you know, he has on a lot of good people, a lot of good topics and uh, works well in that space. And then at the end of each episode, like he'll play a song from some conscious artist that he likes or whatever. And so that's how we discovered Trevor Hall actually was mm. through Brandon's pod right on. podcast. And so, wow. So it, it, it reels it all in. It reels it there's all in. The, there's it, the nugget. There's a web to this whole thing, wow. right? And uh, that's cool. We're going to whiteboard this whole thing on video at some point too. Oh yeah. Can't yeah. We have to. Can't uh, wait. We have to. And so, you know, anyone who, who listens to the show here knows that I, like Trevor Hall is a big deal to me and his whole community of people, that whole community of artists are, are a big deal to us. And, and so it all came from the Positive Head podcast, yeah. right? Thanks to Brandon, along with a lot of other ideas and interesting people, authors and stuff I found. Mm -hmm. And so Jeff calls me up like three months ago and he's like, hey dude, uh, you ever heard of Positive Head podcast? And I'm like, well, fuck yeah, of course I have. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I never heard of them before, but um, they sound awesome. Anyway, they invited me to, apparently the host of the Positive Head podcast is now doing this late night talk show in the conscious space. And he's got an art gallery and he has musicians and he has mm -hmm. a speaker or guest person come on and they're doing this thing and they've invited me to bring my artwork out to the show in the gallery and I'm like losing my fucking mind. Mm -hmm. Like this is amazing. Like this is like my girlfriend's favorite person in the world is right. Brandon mm -hmm. Beecham. Right. And uh and so I'm like he goes, "Dude, you want to come out there with me?" <laughs> yes, I want to come out there with you. It'd be tremendous. It'd be a great time. Mm. And uh and so we uh we we start making plans and uh, he sends me over the information for the gallery manager, um, Vajra, who's Vajra. a phenomenal human. And, oh, he's amazing. An amazing artist, visionary artist. And uh, Vajra, what's up, man, if you're out there? Love you, brother. Mm. And so I call Vajra. I'm like, hey, Jeff gave me some details. Not much, but here's what I got. <laughs> and he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so I'm asking him questions. Like, when is the show? What are we doing? Whatever. And he goes, um, you know, I'm not sure. Let me talk to Brandon and get back with you. So he goes and talks to Beecham. He calls me back. He's got answers. I have more questions. He goes and talks to Beecham, calls me back. I get more answers. I go ask Jeff questions. Jeff doesn't know shit. There's, <laughs> I, and next thing you know, I find myself running between these two right brain artists, yep. you know, mm -hmm. who are really not one for details. You know, that makes they're sense. just like, yeah, Jeff's coming. And he's like, yeah, I'm coming. And it'll be great. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of this really abstract thought going on in conversation. I'm yep. like, so Jeff, like, what are we doing there? What time do we get there? Hey, I don't know, man. It's gonna be great. We're gonna have the best time. <laughs> so Jeff, like, what time do we show up, dude? It's gonna be awesome. It's just gonna be so cool, awesome. So like, um, 
great are you doing live painting yeah no i'm not sure like it's just gonna be awesome i can't do this all happening it's fucking cool yep and so <laughs> so uh, i was like all right i see i got this i got this so yep. Um, it's been a great experience and I've gotten to now you know, talk with Brendan Beecham a couple of times and what a fucking cool, authentic, high vibe guy he is. And, mm -hmm. um, and then through this, uh, we did find out Jeff's going to be doing live painting, mm -hmm. um, which was kind of a, a, a late surprise. I thought, you know, I don't think Le Jeff knows that he's doing live painting, Roger. Right. And so I better yeah. call him. Because uh, I think if he shows up in California and is expected to do live painting and he's not aware of it, he's going to shit himself. Oh, yeah. I would. <laughs> I don't know what would happen. Yeah, that would have been interesting. So, what, two weeks ago, I guess, we got this information? Yeah, and, and we were talking about it, and, and, and I'm like, how I'm going to have to start something brand new. you mm -hmm. know? And, of course, it takes half a day to even prep a panel sure. to paint on. Not to mention coalescing an idea that I can un un unleash on this, uh, on this panel. So... Um, I had to work really fast and really diligently at the same time. Mm -hmm. As crazy as that it's sounds. It's funny is when you were describing that news, you were like, I didn't have anything. You, you started blank. Back to that blank space. Back you to know? blank and space. This is created yep. out yep. of it. You filled the blank space with your intention and the environment that you were heading into. Yeah. You, you, it, cre it, it actually was a great motivator mm -hmm. in, in, in being like, this is where we're headed, which is from where I live it's across the entire country. It's as mm -hmm. far away from it, my it, home as, as you can yeah. uh, you can get. It's mm -hmm. as far away as two points in the, in the continental United States can be. It yeah. is. It's going from Connecticut to L.A., you know? That's crazy. Maybe Maine to San Diego might be farther by a 20 miles, but, but yeah, not by, not by much splitting hairs here. Se that, yeah. Seattle to Miami, Even, right? Not to mention, you know, um, I, I said yes to it before I can even figure out how to m m send these j two giant paintings over there. Sure. One of them's, you know, con contemporary size in 18, 18 by 24, but one of them is, is a monster. Okay. And um, it would have been challenging as, as it's as challenging enough as with a small painting, you know, with, with the worries and anxieties of shipping something that valuable mm -hmm. across the country to oh, be displayed in, in a fashion that, you know, that can represent what's, what's, what's coming and what we're going to be involved in. So mm -hmm. that was... Uh, a necessary challenge that I had to hop on and I had to pull uh, some people in to kind of help that process, you know, but it, it worked. Yeah, it, it worked. worked out. And uh, the difference in you and your anxiety pre-shipping versus post-shipping is basically two different human beings. Oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm thankful for your <laughs> sake that this all worked out because, Jesus, you, it were, was chaotic. you were getting a little bit tattered at the <laughs> edges, man. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's then, a big buildup. Yeah, yeah. It's a big deal. So it's it's really cool. Uh, so it, all the listeners and audience, go support the Positive Head podcast. Go follow um, Brandon yes, Beecham yes. and... Their whole thing. The name of the the show is called Optimistic. Optimistic. M Y S T I C. And I think you can go to optimistic.com or optimistic.tv. I can't remember, but um, the show is being recorded. They're doing all the, all the recordings in front of a live audience right now. Every week they have a um, they have an artist, a visual a visionary artist or visual artist like like Jeff or someone, and then they have a musical artist. I think, mm -hmm. and then they have like their their main guest on the stage, like a sort of David Letterman style, you know, whatever. Yep with a live audience and it's hosted out of this big mansion in Venice beach. Um, it's called the mystic manor mystic manor. And, uh, it's this really cool, crazy looking spaceship mansion in Venice beach. Mm. And, uh, it this is, is a wild looking. Is. Yeah. It is. It's, it's a bizarre, cool place. And, um, you can, you can actually get a, uh, you can pay for a stay like a, um, a retreat there. And so they're, they're running retreats there. I think they're week long. I don't remember what they cost, but, they, they bring people in. They go through the whole retreat thing. Well, I forget what all the retreat involves there, but mm. it's really cool. Very holistic application. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. very holistic kind of process. Very and, cool. And then those people are in the audience along with other people. Okay. And so um, it's going to be a really a really cool this thing. This sounds like fully immersive in so many facets. I bet mm, the brain yeah. is just going to be exploding by the end of it, of all these yeah. different things. Oh, yeah. This concentration of this yeah. brought into one space. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be really cool. And so... Create some room for that chaos. Guys. Create some room for that chaos. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. that's kind of what we're trying to do right now. Um, from talking to Brandon, he doesn't know... There is no knowledge of when this thing's going to go live, but I, I think it's they're looking like December, January, mm. and right now the the plan seems to be to to launch um, uh, on like a YouTube platform or something like that. But I know that he's looking for syndication from uh, some other TV networks yeah. and stuff that you know are what they are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
can't really say that, but uh, that's where we're at. And so you guys go follow Optimistic on Instagram. Uh, follow you know follow us so you, you know where, where we're coming from. We'll tag them in some stuff. Uh, but be on the lookout for that show to release sometime soon too. Mm. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, I know. We'll get there tomorrow. And uh, I guess this well, on your live video, maybe someone will catch this. But if anyone's in L.A., and wants to say hi to yeah, us. Yeah, that would be. We'll be at the optimistic. Tremendous. We'll be at the Mystic Manor Saturday during the day at the gallery. Yep. Now, doing a walkthrough. What time is that at? By the way. <laughs> <laughs> you fired. Uh, you fired. I'm just a painting monkey. Remember? Yeah, that? you're just a dancing monkey, man. Yep. With a paintbrush. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Yeah, you just show up. Mm-hmm. I'll just I'll put you on a leash and walk you around. Yeah. So you gotta get me a, one of the fez, a fez, <laughs> and a little, little blazer, a little jacket, some symbols, a little symbols. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll we'll get to LA tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon, Friday, yep. uh, the eighth, and then uh, all day Saturday we'll be up there. Mm. We'll hook up with some people in LA. It'll be fun. Yeah, awesome. And, uh, Stepping into the un- it sounds like a fantastic experience. Mm. Yeah, it'll be really cool. Um, Brandon is gonna we're gonna do a podcast together on his show, mm. and then we'll do one on on our show with Brandon that'll be a lot of fun so we'll swap mics and have some cool conversations absolutely he's a really cool dude yeah really cool. he's a really cool dude um mm. yeah man best awesome. app awesome this is exciting yeah it's good times can't say I'm not met with the twinge of a little jealousy yeah the envy you know uh, well, the but w- I'm very happy, I, and and I get to vicariously. You guys will recount all of this. For oh, me, absolutely. You know? Yeah, and yeah. you know, I think it's going to be. I know it's it's going to be the the beginning of a, of a good relationship with us and Brandon too. You and know, it's, he, you know, yeah, and they're 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 creating a hub, right? You know, a sure. really an incredible node. You know, and you know, Adams in one part of the country. I'm in one of the part of the country, and they're on the other side of the country. You know, so it's like I couldn't help but say yes to reaching out and, and connecting that thread mm-hmm. with these nodes, you know, and it's like, oh. this is this is the way it needs to be, you know, even though it's like, well, it's halfway across the country, it's going to, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's the... There's a million reasons why not. Yeah, especially when you're a hermit. I was about to say. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're like Bilbo, yeah. and you're like, well, it doesn't have the comforts of the studio. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, you're Bilbo, and I'm Gandalf, bitch. It, that's right. <laughs> and, and I'm fine with that narrative, especially since we watched Tolkien last night. Mm-hmm. And that's where that's that's where we're at. So we're living in that mystical uh, reality that we're generating, that we have generated, you know, and all these, these connective, invisible fibers that we're kind of connecting. And, you know, th- I've always been attracted to the West Coast anyway, mm-hmm. and I've been intentionally attracted to it lately and and look at where, look at what happened mm-hmm. i mean it's 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 too wild yeah know? we've been wanting to do this podcast for a couple of years we didn't think it was going to happen right and then it just it, it happened because of you getting invited to this other show which mm. is an evolution of a podcast that, that that ashley and i were watching three four years ago that mm. was that was you know transformative for us sure you know, gave us a an inroad to a lot of different ideas and stuff, and then it comes full circle. Yeah, snake eats its tail, as we say. Or Boris, yeah, yeah. Boris. I love it, man. Mm. It's crazy. Um, what else is going on in the world that we need to talk about? I don't know. We've spanned a lot. It's um. We have. We have. Well, it's been an experience. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Very very awesome, awesome awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. I love it. I um. I, I didn't know, you know, I, having never had the conversation in the relationship that you guys had, I knew not about you, but, you know, it's one thing for somebody to all of a sudden, let's mic them up and let's sit down and let's talk. Let's go deep. Yeah. You know, let's yeah. get sweaty with this. And, yeah. and uh, it's been absolutely fascinating. I've, I've loved to hear your insights. Oh, and, man. And thank through you. these conversations, I always learn and grow and stuff. Oh, me, my, yeah. Yeah. This is a journey in real time for me. So yeah. Uh, uh, you guys have such a com- such a command with with what your expertise is and how you're able to embellish what the topic of discussion is, mm. which is not an easy skill to have, especially when it's just something like, yeah, we, we are Kings of embellishment. Yeah. And I, I like, <laughs> I like, you know, it's a great band name too, by the way, Kings of embellishment, Kings of embellishment. <laughs> I love it. And, man. um, so I've appreciated, you know, this, this whole meeting, it's been really, really great. And, oh, yeah. um, I love, I love sharing, you know, it's nice to be in that space, you know, to impart some 
um, area of expertise that. I wasn't really even really conscious of until you guys brought it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, <laughs> it, know? it's crazy how sometimes people asking you questions can dig things out about yourself that maybe yeah, you never, like, huh, you know. Huh. I've, I've been invited to, to do a few podcasts, you know, mm. and I'm used to doing the questions, you know. Yeah. And kind of yeah. carrying the conversation. And I, I, I get asked these questions sometimes, and I'm like, man, I, I talk a lot. I think a lot. But then I get one person that asks me a, a series of questions or even one question, and I'm like, I don't know. I never thought about that before. Mm. And I find myself exploring my belief systems, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. exploring what makes me me, my personality, my triggers. And someone just asked me one question, and all of a sudden I'm learning more about myself from that. And I love that part of the platform, part of the discussion. Yeah. You know, I love digging that out of people mm. and especially in a triangulation setting like this when you got three people to bounce these ideas off of you can really dig things out mm -hmm. i might catch something that jc doesn't about something you say yeah and then i dig in deeper and all of a sudden you're learning something about that and that triggers jc and he's oh you know, yeah it's, yeah it's just uh spiraling trifecta of fucking coolness I like oh yeah it. it's awesome yeah it's a beautiful dance yeah it's yeah. a beautiful dance we're dancing with it all yeah well um you guys i'll tell you what we'll go ahead and wrap it up then Okay. We'll wrap it up. Unless there's something we want to talk about. Is there anything we want to talk about? Is there Atlantis, mm -hmm. uh, ancient civilizations, Hindu mm -hmm. art, um, tribal architecture of the indigenous peoples of mm -hmm. southern Peru? There's so much. We could end up going for a long, a longer time than we can always yeah. get a third one in. Yeah. That's true. All right. Guys, we're going to wrap it up for now. Um, this might be part two of two. This might be part two or three. Who knows? Um, but we're getting out of here, so thank you guys for joining us. Please go to wayfinderpodcast.com and uh, check out... There you go. Just hit that. Check out wayfinderpodcast.com. You can support us on Patreon there on the website, and we really we really appreciate that support. And we actually just shot a video for all the patrons today where we unveiled Jeff's newest piece that no one else has seen nobody's seen this yeah. second newest piece actually thank you for that buddy. oh uh, you're welcome but it's a beautiful remarkable striking piece and um for three bucks a month you know we got like three five ten fifty hundred million dollar a month options whatever you want to do based on how much you appreciate us how much we've impacted you and how much cheddar you got to spread us yeah and that million a month tier is filling up quick it so really get is. in there get in there in while you still there's can not enough that's yeah, right yeah. that's right pretty soon we're gonna be all maxed out on millionaire donors yep. yeah uh but it supports the podcast and it uh goes to um obviously pr producing stuff and then bringing in people like jeff that are that are so gifted to that we get to really share their their stories with you too so um we appreciate all of you guys who support us on patreon keep bringing that in uh like share subscribe on your platform of choice and please leave us some comments and ratings especially on like apple uh podcast app leave us ratings let us know what you think tell us about it because if it's doing anything for you that's uh, uplifting enlightening inspiring entertaining in any way obviously we want to we want to spread the wealth and let other people have access to that too so the algorithms smile on us whenever we get those mm. comments and those ratings and stuff like that so we appreciate you guys Follow Jeff at Jeff Sullivan Art on Instagram, JeffSullivanArt.com, and uh, JeffSullivanArt at gmail.com if you want to email him. It's JSVisionary at gmail. JSVisionary. Correct, yes. At gmail.com. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. You guys go do that. Um, and I think that's about it. Of course, we're at Wayfinder Podcast on all platforms, but you guys already get that. You can go to the website, WayfinderPodcast.com, get access to all of our stuff. And um, that's it, man. From uh, Adam, JC, and Jeff, mm. peace out. May the light be upon you. May peace be within you. May you be a sun on the paths of all men. Love you guys. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Sweetness.